you woke to another stream how about that how about that bet you didn't expect that to happen mm -mm -mm. hello 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 go on the third out nine i good duke studying tos nicola judge yai i don't know how to pronounce your nickname but hello hello uh john john Hello, hello, Knazer, hello, hello, Sasalala23, uh, apparently potatoes, hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So today is a Saturday and that means today, according to the schedule, we are doing a game development. Hello, uh, 7001, Xtian Bot 1. Are you a bot? Are you actually a bot? Where bots are not allowed on this channel, did you, did you know that? Hello, Arbar19, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, yeah, today we're doing uh, game development in C++ and we continue to develop the game that we've been developing for quite some time, boys and girls. Uh, let's fetch the other stuff and uh, see what's gonna happen. Uh, so we have some uh, branches actually deleted and it takes some time. Uh, check out, uh, check out master. Been doing C++ for the last 24 hours, time to relax by watching some C++ development. Well, we're not doing C++ today per se, we're doing C slash C++, or, or as I recently um, I started to call it C++. Uh, C++. So it's, it's kind of a completely different paradigm, so uh, yeah, so this is what we're doing today. Um, all right, so I checked out the master and I'm gonna do git merge origin uh, master So it's like programming in C, but using C++ compiler. That's what it means to, to do C++ C++ um, All right, so and then I'm gonna delete the branch 339 and let me build everything. I'm still using uh, make files in this particular <clears throat> in this particular project so what do we have here uh let me put on my headphones and let's see so this is the game that we've been developing for quite some time you can jump around uh, it's a simple platform you can do pew 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 you can do a project different projectiles as you can see um i wonder if you can hear me yeah you probably can hear me quite well so uh another thing you can place blocks of different kinds uh right you cannot click here for some reason i was trying to click there and uh the most important thing uh we can do we recently were developing we were developing a stomp attack uh that also performs different that also spawns different spikes and stuff like that this is what we were uh working on so yeah this is basically the game, so you can also have uh, different enemies, we can try to spawn them. So what kind of enemies do we want to spawn here? We probably uh, want to spawn something like this. And uh, this enemy is trying to actually pathfind us, and it's also able to stomp and shoot. Uh, so it's, a it's acting a little bit pepega, and as you can see, uh, it's completely broken. Uh, so yeah, this is what we can t uh, we're going to continue developing today. Uh, and before we're gonna do that, I'm gonna go to the kitchen and pour myself hot water to make a cup of tea. So yeah, it's it's absolutely beautiful game. It's as you can see, it's almost uh, release ready, right? So especially for the 2021 uh, standards, right? So it 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 still has less bugs than uh, Cyberpunk. So don't worry about it. We can release it. Uh, anyway, I'm just gonna quickly go to the kitchen. Don't go anywhere, or I'm gonna release this game. <laughs> so, yeah. And you don't want that to happen. Uh, God damn. I actually did groceries right, right before the stream. And you know what I forgot to buy? I forgot to buy Earl Grey, so today I'm drinking a regular ass tea. So it is what it is. Uh, to, 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 to. Mm, hello, hello everyone who just joined. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So what we're gonna do today? Uh, I don't know. Um, to be fair, I wanna do something not really game design related more of a like a technical thing because i'm a technical guy so yeah i want some technical shit 
so let me see, let me see. We can do something for AIDS. Uh, so for this, who doesn't know, AIDS is a library uh, that we um, basically, uh, that um, this is not AIDS. This is a library that is supposed to be uh, a replacement for STD. And I'm using it instead of uh, C++ STD. So, uh, and you can find it in there. And I wanted to develop something for this library to improve things and stuff like that. Uh, hello, Jan Ponsong. Welcome to the stream. So, one of the things about these kind of like libraries uh, um, is you need to be able to customize memory allocations, right? So, if you have a library of data structures, right, um, they're going to be allocating memory. Uh, for example, we have dynamic array, which is uh, a pretty, you know, pretty simple data structure, the most simple data structure that you can come up with, uh, right? And uh, it's growing, right? It's growing in size. Uh, when you push things, when it overflows its capacity, it will reallocate uh, to grab some more memory and so on and so forth, um, right? And uh, it uses uh, realloc here, right? It uses realloc. So another thing that we use here, we also use hash map, uh, hash map. So here it is. And uh, when you exceed uh, the capacity of the hash map, it actually creates a new hash map, destroys the previous one. Um, and uh, essentially, um, yeah, it, it, it still do, does the memory alloc reallocation. But the thing is, the user of that library may not want to use malloc and free. Uh, the user may not uh, have malloc on may not want to use malloc on free. For example, in C++, this is solved by providing a custom memory allocator uh, as the gen uh, template parameter of the um, of the structure. So if you take a look at the vector, so everyone knows about the vector, right? So if you're doing C++ or more than C++, right? So you know this data structure, std vector, right? And you probably, uh, you know, define a, a vector like this, right? And you probably think that you can only provide a single parameter here, right? You can only provide a single parameter here. But this is not true. It actually has several parameters and um, it actually has two. And the second parameter that it gets is the allocator. Right, it, it takes the allocator. So essentially, you provide uh, uh, that um, it uses the default one, and the default one is just like new or delete, or maybe it's based on malloc. I don't remember what exactly it does, but it has uh, all of these, you know, um, operators, I would say. Right, so uh, you can create an allocator, then you can allocate some memory, then you can deallocate some memory, and so on and so forth. And at some point, if you don't want the vector to use the standard allocator, you can create your own one. You just need to create that one. So uh, we can go that route. We can kind of go that route, but um, I don't know. Uh, in my experience, it's just like having more and more like template parameters um, tends to create very complicated code, right? Because you edit uh, another parameter here, you edit another parameter there, uh, you, that forces you to actually add a lot of parameters in different places, even though if you have like this default thingy. So, um, yeah. Uh, to be fair, John Blow came up with an interesting idea for the allocators uh, in his language called Jai. So instead of like passing the allocators around all the time, he just decided, well, fuck it, let's make the allocator a global variable and let's actually make it a part of the core of the language. So he has something called the context. The context is globally available thing that is available to everything. And if you want to allocate the memory, you have to use the allocator within that context. And everything, including third party libraries, have to use that context, which forces um, you know, these third party libraries to use that mechanism. And at any point, um, as far as I know, you can substitute the allocator in the context. Uh, you can substitute the allocator in the context and all of the third party uh, libraries that written in that language will use the new allocator, whether they want it or not, because that's the only way to allocate memory in, in the language anyway. Right. So there's only one, like, there's not, not only one, but there's like standard way of allocating memory in a language. And that way also allows you to substitute the allocators. So it's actually a very interesting, very interesting approach. And I was thinking, can you do something like that? 
uh, but in terms of C, C++, you, you can create like a, uh, a library, like in AIDS, uh, right, uh, where you can, uh, you can have a global variable. But the advantage of J, for example, is that the way of allocating memory is enforceable by the language. The language and the conventions in the language and like the core and syntax and like everything enforces you to use that context. If you if you do that on the level of a single library like AIDS, you cannot enforce everyone to use your uh, um, allocator mechanisms and stuff like that. Uh, so that's going to be the downside if we're going to go that route, right? So that's going to be the downside. We can we cannot enforce everyone to use that allocator. Um, but we can only enforce like everyone who uses AIDS to use that allocator, right? Uh, so maybe that's the route we're going to go. So I'm going to create like a global variable within the AIDS that stores the allocator. You can substitute the allocator and if you use AIDS, uh, you use that mechanism. And so basically that mechanism is enforced on all of the users of AIDS. So, um... Mm -mm. By watching bold men stream on Twitch. Yeah, it actually works for me. So I watched watch John for a couple of years and I get better at programming. <laughs> He's not bold. Why does he not actually shave his hand yet again? I mean, I don't care. I'm just joking, of course. Doesn't matter. Um, all right. Um, anyways, so I'm not sure if that approach is going to be uh, actually good or suitable for our project. But I just wanted to try that. Just wanted to try to see what kind of problems we're gonna encounter. Like, you, you know what I mean. So, how about some intellectual masturbation in C slash C++? Does that sound interesting? That sounds interesting. Uh, let's celebrate and drink some tea. Uh, Oh, mm -mm. malloc size size. Okay, the thing is, uh, what kind of allocators do I want to use? That's a good question. So first of all, if I oh holy shit, if I don't care, if I'm writing like a throwaway program, writing throwaway program, I want to use malloc, right? Because I don't care. Uh, if I'm doing something, you know. Uh, something sophisticated, maybe I want to have linear allocators and actually uh, several linear allocators for different uh, lifetimes. So, and the thing about linear allocators, you cannot really reallocate within the linear allocator. So that's kind of the problem. Um, but to be fair, reallocation is essentially just freeing a chunk of memory and allocating another one. And that could work in a linear allocator if you think about that, right? So essentially, um, if you have a linear allocator, like a free, free call is not going to do anything because in linear allocator you alloc deallocate everything at once uh, at the end of some like imaginary lifetime uh, of some things. So yeah, I think we'll have to also adapt some of this data structure to not use reallocate or maybe the uh, allocator has to implement reallocate. By the way, in C++, does the allocator um, have an operation to reallocate? No, it doesn't. So I suppose if you do uh, like uh, write a data structure that integrates with the C++ standard uh, allocator, if and you want to reallocate something, you literally deallocate or maybe allocate another piece of uh, memory, copy from old place to a new place and deallocate the old place. The thing that we did in the hash table, by the way, I guess that's how we do that. So, and reallocate is essentially that anyway. So yeah, I guess, I guess it is what it is and it isn't what it isn't. Okay, so let's go to the official uh, place of AIDS. <laughs> Does it sound so bad? <laughs> Where is the official place of AIDS? I mean, the, the folder where we develop AIDS. Yeah. A realloc is just a, a composition of uh, a lock and dialog. The official place of AIDS. I mean, the, the folder, this one, it's, it's a Rexim slash AIDS. Ah. Okay, so uh, let's fetch the latest stuff. The, the, the stuff. We have some stuff. We've got some stuff. 
So, uh, and here what it would do, um, made it makeable with MCs2, uh, yeah. Uh, by the way, it's, it's interesting, Bilkek has been submitting pull requests for all of my projects and making them compilable with MCs min GW. <laughs> And I really appreciate that. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's kind of like once in a while I receive a pull request from Bill Keck, uh, making one of my projects compilable with MinGW. <laughs> so thank you so much. <laughs> uh, and much, but it's honest work. Yeah, is it, it's, is it you? Pog you? All right. <clears throat> um, so. Let's go. Uh, no, it's not you. Ah, okay. I was hoping that you're actually helping. You're useless. Well, at least you're a subscriber. Okay, the tests uh, have passed, and let's actually try to build some examples. Yeah, examples have been built. Beautiful. Absolutely freaking beautiful. My gut. So, how are we gonna have this uh, global variable? Um, how are we going to have this global variable? We're going to just define it here. <laughs> Come on. Uh, so first of all, we need to define uh, the signature of the allocator. What do we consider an allocator? So um, how are we going to call it? I, I don't want to call it allocator. It's like too, too long of a name. Uh, I really like to call uh, allocators ator because it's, it's like ctor is a constructor right ctor is a constructor dtor is a destructor and ator is allocator you see you see what i mean you see what i mean here so i think i think it's pretty it's pretty clever and uh, once you explain that uh, it's like really easy to remember what that means so it's similar to ctor dtor and what so on and so forth i think i think it's a pretty good name so it's gonna be ator and um potato um time for a translator titor beater baiter jibater jibater oh jibater is gonna be jator no, i suppose it's a jator master baiter haha <laughs> classic all right so what we're we gonna have here we're gonna have different functions Uh, for allocating and deallocating, right? So uh, also this thing also has some other stuff. What is it? What is address? Oh, by the way, before two thousand seventeen, the allocator didn't have more than just allocate and deallocate. And then C plus plus seventeen came in and uh, introduced all sorts of shit. Uh, construct an object in allocated stores, destruct an object. Ah. I think I understand why they have this additional shit. They probably changed some sort of a semantic, uh, like lifetime semantic in the language. And that's why, for example, new compilers couldn't maybe tell that the, uh, the lifetime of, of the object starts somewhere in place constructing. Ah, I see. For perfect, like forwarding and stuff like that. When you have a type passed uh, as a template parameter, right? So without like constructing it outside, you actually constructing it inside. I see. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Sure. Why? Well, I'm okay with that. Mm, anyway, so but since we're keeping it simple and being stupid, <laughs> uh, we're gonna only have allocate and deallocate. So uh, I'm gonna call it alloc uh, and deallocate. How are we gonna call uh, deallocate? Dialog. Does it sound good? I think I think that's good. Uh, keep it simple and stay stupid. As Steve Jobs said, stay simple, stay stupid. <laughs> ah! um, okay. Um, so now we're going to return this and uh, I suppose this is how you make a, a pointer to a function. Well, um, that would fit jobs, I guess. I don't know. I never knew him. So maybe, maybe, maybe it will. Uh, so, and we need to also accept the size uh, which we want to allocate, right? Uh, after that, after that, we're gonna deallocate that, and uh, to deallocate, we're gonna just provide the pointer. But what's interesting is that, uh, for example, if you make an allocator based on 
a map, right? Uh, a map needs to know the size. A map needs to know the size. <laughs> Uh, but on top of that, on top of that, you need some sort of a context that you want to actually work with, right? What I mean is, uh, what if your allocator also keeps track of some sort of a state, right? It has some sort of a data structure, it has some sort of a state and shit like that. So uh, you need to accept uh, the context, right? You need to accept the context. Uh, right, so this is a very C way of doing things, and uh, the context is probably going to be here, um, like this, and that's it's, it's, a, it's a closure. A lock, de lock. Mm, eh, maybe. Oh, we'll see. Okay. So, do we need anything else? Do we need anything else? I don't think so. All right. It always feels like you should use some virtual functions and stuff like that, uh, but I don't want to do it. Alignment. Do you really need alignment? Why malloc doesn't accept alignment though? I don't think we need to uh, focus on alignment right now. What we're trying to do, we're trying to introduce the mechanism. I think it's kind of, kind of outside of the scope of what we're exactly doing here. Right, it's like thinking um, about supporting uh, all the possible outputs of all of the all possible operating system while developing Hello World and not having a Hello World at all, right? You haven't printed anything on a single screen yet. Why are you thinking about outputting to all of the possible terminals of all of the possible operating system? Like that's that's what it sounds to me when you start talking about alignment one, while doing that. Cool, but you you don't have anything. You literally have zero code. Why are we talking about that? Um, but that's how programming. Well, yeah, we, we detected OP programmer in the chat. <laughs> literally. <laughs> Uh, okay, so another interesting thing. So we're gonna have a, a standard um, allocator available. So ATOR. Um, so how we're we gonna call it? Uh, ATOR. This is how I'm gonna call it. <laughs> but what's what is it gonna be equal to? Right. It's gonna be equal to allocator that works with malloc. Right. The standard libc allocator. So how we're we gonna call it? I think we're gonna call it mater right so it's a, it's a malloc allocator <laughs> i'm really good at naming right so don't i i, I am i i don't know I, I don't know how to do that questions I'm, I'm sorry um hi guys what we doing today hmm key comrade in the chat this is our project am i right comrades that's right. What are we doing today? Mm -hmm. uh, so, no, 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 this is not how I'm going to define the mater. Mater is going to be just uh, ATER, but with the context defined to, to different things. The context is going to be initially null PTR. Uh, didn't you get your Hector Fest t shirt yet? <laughs> Welcome to Russia. Ah, I think it got lost. Um, so. <laughs> I don't really care to be fair, so... Uh, yes, I didn't get it. Um, so, I was actually uh, submitting my address knowing that there is like 90% chance that I'm not gonna get it. So, I was just... <laughs> didn't really care much. So, and people could always ask me, Zorzin, why don't you just order online? Really? Like a, a t-shirt, a, a fucking t-shirt. Imagine uh, like actually ordering something of more of a value. Um, so yeah, this is why. <clears throat> uh, so uh, I suppose we need to have some sort of wrappers, right? Um, I do it. Well, you probably live in a better place then. <laughs> uh, to be fair, like another, in, another thing that um, actually stops me from ordering anything online is that because my uh, 
the my place of residence is kind of unstable i'm constantly renting different apartments and i don't know at which point i can suddenly just move away for whatever fucking reason and if i'm ordering something like i'm always afraid that uh, i'll have to be forced to move away uh, before something like something that i ordered all right so <laughs> uh, so yeah yeah on the run from kgb yes yes um Mm. Will you sell online though? Zozin merch when? We already have a Zozin merch, don't we? On the red bubble. Uh, stickers? Or sticker, a single one? Yeah, there we go. So I, I created like a red bubble account a long time ago, and you can actually order a single sticker of this emote if you want to. Uh, but it was a long time ago, so, and I. I I don't really get that much money from that anyway. But if you want to order it, you can do it there. So why not? Um, <clears throat> so uh, we're going to have some sort of functions. So it's going to be mater a lock. It accepts the ignored context. It doesn't need any context there, right? It doesn't need anything there. Um, and uh, what we're going to return here, we're going to return a malloc uh, of size. Right, there we go. And of course, uh, since we are uh, ignoring the context, we just do it like that. There we go. Cool. Uh, so then we can do a mater dialog. Uh, ignored and void pointer. And we're going to just do void ignored. Uh, return. It doesn't really need to return anything. Why the hell do I think that it needs to return anything. I think I'm just not a very smart person. Mm. Um, poke, what is that? Nice. Is that a, is that a new logo? You want to donate it to the project or? That's pretty cool. That looks cool. Did you did you draw the tree or did you take it from somewhere? That's actually pretty cool. Nice. All right. <clears throat> it's not a birch, unfortunately. We we don't really know. We only see the contour. So yeah. I stole from the gnome project. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you know how I did my logo. Okay. So how did I do my logo? <laughs> Uh, so I didn't really steal it, right? I didn't really steal it. What I did is that I, I, I went like Birch logo. This is what I googled up and I went to the images. Uh, and if, well, I don't, I cannot find it anymore. God damn it. It's gone. Is that because I have taken it? Um, Birch logo, I think icon, maybe, maybe icon. It was actually closer to that one, but there was like a really similar... Okay, it's not available anymore, but I basically just googled that and uh, found like something similar to that and replicated it, but I didn't trace it. I actually like sort of replicated it, but I cannot find that one anymore, unfortunately. But yeah. Uh, so yeah, but, but still I draw that one from, from scratch. But it was just inspired by, you know, someone else's picture. So, could be cool to make the logo though. Mm -mm. Uh, Alright, so, uh, and this could be the Aether itself, right? This could be the Aether itself, right? So you have uh, these two allocators, the allocators, and you just set them here. Mm, and if you want to replace them, you literally, outside of the aids, should do uh, aids, Aether, uh, alloc, uh, your a lock uh, right your a lock and then dialog uh, dialog and then if uh, if it requires any sort of context right if it requires any sort of context uh, you uh, right your context and it's gonna be passed 
uh, is going to be passed when aids call that thing. So um, another interesting thing is that this is really not threat safe, right? Not enter anymore. Uh, uh, well, but we don't need it. Right? We don't need it. So we, we just have these functions and we just set them here. So there's nothing specially required here. Um, okay. So the thing here is. Mm -hmm. So what I'm thinking, it would be like it's really not convenient to call this uh, the, this function, right? So we have to do ater, ater alloc, ater alloc, then ater context, and only then uh, you know allocate some sort of a memory. It would be better to just call it without the context. And I think I already did something like that. <laughs> so we can create like additional functions that actually redirect uh, this kind of stuff there. Uh, but maybe a little bit later, maybe a little bit later. Um, so the, the thing I'm thinking about right now, how can we make it thread safe? <sighs> Would be... Oh yeah, we are in C++. I, okay, thank you. I forgot about that. I forgot that in, in C++ you can do that. It's uh, the, the problem is that in C you cannot do that, but in C++ you can. Yes, thank you for reminding me. So, yeah. Because I constantly switch between these languages, I switch between pure C and C slash C++, so sometimes I forget what is allowed in C++ and what is not allowed. So, yeah. This is one of the cool features of C++, in my opinion. C definitely should adapt that, because quite often you, you want to ignore things, right? So, uh, and because of that, we wouldn't want to do that. STD atomic, STD ignore equal ignored. Um, yeah, very, very funny. So maybe we, we need to have something like thread locals. Basically, for each individual thread, you're going to have um, a different allocator. Sounds like a reasonable idea. And specifically, uh, how does malloc even handle all of that? How does malloc handle all of that? Um, mm -mm -mm. So thread safety. Okay, attributes and for an explanation of the terms used in the section C attribute 7 interface attribute thread safety value empty safe whatever the fuck is supposed to mean but yeah thread uh, to avoid corruption multi-thread application matrices are used in internally to protect the memory management data structure employed by this function in a multi-threaded application in which threads simultaneously allocate in free memory there could be uh, content for this Contention, uh, contention for this uh, mutex is to scalably handle memory allocations in a multi-threaded application. GDPC creates additional memory allocation arenas if mutex uh, contention is detected. Mutex contention is detected. Uh, each arena is a large region of memory that is intentionally allocated by the system inter internally, inter internally allocated by the system using a break or a, a map and managed with on mutexes. Okay. That's pretty cool. Uh, that's pretty cool. Alrighty, but we're not gonna think about that for now. Mm, so when I do malloc, where is my malloc? No, oh, yeah. Okay, so we do use malloc in a read file as a string. So, but instead of malloc, what we have to do now is uh, ater alloc, right? Ater alloc. Uh, Enter context and there we go. So we don't have to think about that. And what's cool is that we don't have to modify the signatures of, uh, of all of these functions, right? Mm -mm 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 -mm. <sighs> Mutances diminish the use of threads, right? Let's put it this way. Uh, the topic of multi-threading is way more complicated than, uh, complicated than, than you imply in your question. Does it make sense? Um, all right. So, and then uh, where is the malloc? So here's the second malloc. So another one is probably calloc. Uh, yeah, there we go. So we use calloc here. Mm -hmm. um, calloc. Oh, shit. We are programming in C++, aren't we? So that means in our allocator, we can do uh, a little bit of cool stuff. 
Mm, a little bit of cool stuff. So this is the interface. This is just an interface, but I, we really need some helpers here. We really want to have some helpers. Um, and unfortunately, if I'm going to create like these helpers, I don't know how am I, <clears throat> am I going to call it? I'm going um, to call these fields. Right, uh, I'm not sure how we're gonna call these fields, but um, the thing I wanna do now, um, I want to um, make the alloc the following way. I wanna make it a template here. Alloc, no, it's not internal, by the way. It's not internal. It's supposed to be a part of the interface, right? Um, because you are allowed to modify them, right? You are allowed to modify them. Um, so a lock uh, func, it could be a lock func. So this is a lock function. Uh, overloading then. Can you overload them? Can you overload function and the method? Mm. Somebody please issue the command for the poor person. Um, it's a pointer, exactly, exactly. So, um, yeah, and what we have to do here, um, I'm gonna uh, actually allocate a count, right? So this is basically uh, what it is. You're allocating um, an object of a particular type, right? You're allocating an object of a particular type. Uh, so OS, thank you. Thank you so much for two months so of tier one. Thank you so much uh, uh, for two months of tier one subscription. Thank you, thank you. You're a two-timer of the channel now. And welcome to our epic allocator club. Isn't that epic? I think it's pretty epic. Nipsy, hello, hello, welcome to the stream. So this is what I wanna do. So this entire thing will uh, actually allocate you whatever the hell you want, right? So essentially what we're gonna uh, do here, we're gonna return a lock func context count multiplied by the size of the t you see so with a single function you can simultaneously allocate as a single object uh, as well as arrays of objects um and this is a pretty good helper i think um yeah so um and here's some post welcome welcome to the stream um, so the reason why it's, it's so pepega is, is because I'm experimenting with things, right? I'm experimenting with things. So um, if I want to deallocate, do I want to provide the type information? I think it would make sense for me to provide the type information because why not? Um, so uh, yeah, 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 I provide type uh, information and it's going to be a pointer to yeah, it's going to be a pointer. And I want, I'm thinking, do I have to provide this size as well? Do I have to provide the size as well? I think I want to provide the size as well, because some allocators may want to know the size. And as far as I know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if I take a look at the deallocator in C++. Deallocator in C++ also accepts the size of the, of the memory that you want to deallocate. You see? Uh, Nipsey. Thank so you. Important. Thank you. Thank you so much for four months of tier one subscription. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome to our epic deallocation club. Isn't that amazing? I think it's goddamn amazing. Cool. Uh, so whether, um, yeah, so I, I had to actually, uh, thank you, by the way, you forced me to actually make a replacement for the weather of your bot because uh, before I didn't have motivation to do that. <laughs> Uh, so it was actually as simple as adding a new command, but I was too lazy because we had your bot. So yeah, uh, you motivated me to do that. Uh, anyway, hello, my slow ninety. Welcome to the stream. So yeah, I think I want to go this similar route, and what we're gonna do here, we're gonna do dialog func. Uh, providing the context and providing how much we want to deallocate here as well. So it's going to be size of. There we go. And that means the dialog function, dialog function has to accept the size here as well. Uh, stole birch logo, stole command. It's not stolen. It's actually like I drew it from scratch. Um, it's not exact replica of uh, the logo that I found online. It actually has different shape of the leaves 
it has a different shape of the trunk and stuff like that but the idea is kind of like similar to that it's like yeah what about command uh well i mean stall http request to api how can you steal that um yeah Anyways, so, um, oh yeah, by the way, uh, I challenge anybody to find the image uh, that I stole from my logo. Find it. That I stole. Go ahead, find it. Um, it will be actually pretty cool because I really want to find it, right? So because I want to attribute it. <laughs> Uh, so it, I didn't really stole it, but I, it was inspired by that. So yeah, you'll you'll need to find it. Um, okay. <clears throat> so this is what we're doing here, and for allocation for deallocation here, we don't need a size as well. So that's what essentially we're doing. We're just providing the pointer. So and that makes it a little bit easier to use. So now to allocate something, you just do a lock, and uh, you're good to go. Mm, so ater uh, a lock and now you don't have to provide the context first of all and when you're allocating the uh, data right um, this one probably uh, let me take a look nah it's not that one it was a different one sorry um, but what's funny is that all of them kind of have a similar idea behind them if you, if you try to look uh, okay so there's another one by old man let me let me see uh, oh it's it's the same one no it wasn't it was not that one actually um, is, is that the same as well are you, are you all just posting the same one nah it was not that one either uh, but yeah. mm. So what I want to allocate here, I want to actually allocate a character. So yeah, this is how we do it now. This is how we do it. Uh, okay, so uh, aids, right, so where is the calloc? There we go. Um, okay, this is actually pretty cool. So now instead of doing this kind of shit, I can do buckets, um, enter a lock, and I provide the type. The type of this thing is going to be maybe, uh, maybe bucket, right? I'm allocating maybe bucket, and how many of them I want to allocate actually. I'm going to allocate this amount. Look at that. So, uh, I replaced this huge line with just this one. So you have enter a lock buckets and I'll allocate uh, like this amount of buckets and you know what's cool if you want to allocate one single object you can do it like that and you know what is even cooler uh, C++ has default values so that means um, I can do something like this so and now if I want to allocate a single object right I want to allocate a single object it's gonna be just a lock uh, object right if you want to allocate array you provide a number here so it's like it's like it's pretty cool I think I think it's pretty cool. Mm. Yeah. So I'm not sure if I want to provide the size for the allocation, right? Uh, uh, because you may forget to provide uh, the size and it will deallocate it incorrectly in some particular cases. So I think I'm gonna make you think about deallocating all the time. So uh, we're gonna leave it for, uh, like that for now. We'll see. We'll see. Um, all right. So. Now, uh, what was the calloc? Uh, there we go. So it became simpler, and now calloc is gonna be that. So, yeah. Enter mm. a lock. Um, the type is maybe bucket. The type is maybe bucket, and we're doing capacity uh, two, right? We're doing capacity two, um, and that's it. Calloc, alloc. I guess that's it. Do we have any other allocators? Calloc, 
Okay, so what about free? Right, so we also have free. Uh, each call to free has to be replaced to um, to Aether, um, Aether Dialog SV Data. Yes, SV Data. And how much you want to deallocate? Well, you want to deallocate SV Count. That's how much you want to deallocate. Uh, yep. So you usually know how much you want to deallocate. All right. So this is the dynamic array, and um, you are doing Aether Dialog. Why is necessary use allocators? Why do you think it's necessary? Let's start it this way. So your question has a lot of weird assumptions. Um, uh, and first of all, why do you think it's necessary? The second question I have, uh, what do you mean by allocator? When you say allocator, what, what do you mean? Do you know what is allocator? Like, it's like your question is just filled with all of these assumptions that you force me to accept uh, by answering it. So... Mm -hmm. uh, so... Okay, so it's going to be dynamic array data, right? And what we're deallocating here is dynamic array capacity, right? Dynamic array capacity, and there we go. So we do have any other free thingy here. So we are free in buckets here. Mm, free in buckets. And uh, it's going to be Aether free uh, buckets. Uh, buckets. <sighs> buckets of capacity, I suppose. Chat. Do you have a buckets of capacity? Uh... All right. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Who are you? Yeah, I think I think it's all right. So we're doing everything correctly here. Uh, if we have that, it's going to be Aether dialog uh, dialog buckets hash map. Um, what was that capacity? Mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know what would be even cooler in my opinion what if I want to have like what if I want to constantly switch between the um, between different allocators and shit What is going on? All right. Mm, okay. So another thing, uh, reallocation, right? So we use reallocation in some of the uh, cases uh, for the stretch of buffer, for example, but this one, this thing is kind of like deprecated. You're not supposed to be using it. So I don't think we're gonna uh, actually update it at some point. So, um, mm, 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 mm. Mm. Realloc. Okay. So when we are reallocating, right, how we're doing that? <laughs> because I don't want to do it manually. <laughs> that's that's the thing. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna create like a new data. So here's the new data, right? And uh, Aether a lock, right? Aether a lock, and I need to allocate T, uh, and it's gonna be a capacity, uh, a new capacity essentially. Um, all right, so, but we have to do that with the new capacity. So that means I will have to uh, create this thing here. Um, hi, Tsojung, may I ask which browser do you use? Yes, of course, I'm using Internet Explorer 6. Thank you for asking this interesting question. I think Internet Explorer 6 is the best browser that the humanity has ever invented. So that's why I'm using it. Um, all right, so this is the new capacity. We create a new thing here. And uh, Netscape Navigator. Well, I mean, the only thing that that can beat Internet Explorer uh, is Netscape Navigator, of course. Um, now, 
Thank you. You're welcome. Mm, memcpy. So what we're copying here, we're copying new data, right? New data uh, uh, from the old data. And how much we're copying? We were copying it uh, like this amount of data, like this exact amount of data. Uh, after that, after we copied it, we should not forget to deallocate, uh, deallocate that data. So it's going to be dialog uh, data capacity, right? And the uh, data becomes the new data and the capacity becomes the new capacity. So this is how we do the uh, reallocation in our particular case. Mm -hmm. Mm. All right, so what do we have here? Uh, too few arguments to the function. Oh, okay. So we provide the context and we also provide the pointer. Okay, so is it working now? Uh, I forgot this uh, semicolon. Uh, did I forget anything? Dialog, of course. It's dialog. Uh, and here, invalid conversion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we'll have to do something like static cast to the pointer t uh, like this. Otherwise, it's not going to work properly. Uh, and in here, invalid conversion const void to void star. That's very interesting. So it's a const void. Is it really const void? Wait a second. Um, invalid conversion from. Is it really that, that what happened? Maybe. Ah, I see. I see what happened here. Okay, okay. So yeah deallocating goddamn deallocating string views is actually kind of dangerous so we'll have to uh we'll have to maybe deprecate deallocating string views because they're not supposed to be owning data so that's why they are not really deallocatable per se so um what is the stream challenge what why do you think there is a challenge are you are you okay there <laughs> <laughs> uh, what? Boost the stream thing. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as I say, because I'm using like a good chat client, that's why, right? I don't know why you use these crappy web clients. It just doesn't make any sense for me. Like I'm just using a good client and I didn't see all of this crap. So yeah, that's why I don't know what you guys are talking about. Uh, all right, so just use a normal chat client and you're gonna be fine. Trust me. Um, okay So, um, what I was doing. Yeah, yeah, so I need to destroy right destroy this thing and I feel like uh, I need to do const <laughs> ah, Because this is a constant thing and I need to deallocate it and it's ah. C++ const cast. So I have to use it. Um, I like new new style. What do you mean? You mean the, the hair? Ah, okay. Thank you. Uh, so. Mm, return a new value of the type of new type. Okay. So only the following conversion can be done with con uh, const cast. In particular, only const cast may be used to cast away, remove con uh, constants or uh, volatility. Well, volatility. Okay. So yeah, that's that's what we'll have to do here, boys and girls. That's what we'll have to do. We'll have to do it like that. Unfortunately, it is what it is, uh, and it isn't what it isn't. We will get a read of that at some point. Trust me, we'll get rid of that at some point. So yeah, we introduced this interesting idea uh, where you have like a global uh, allocator, right? <clears throat> Const cast, the bit cast? What the hell is a bit cast? C++ bit cast. Uh, holy shit, how many more casts do you need to introduce? Obtain a value of a type to uh, by reinterpreting the object representation of from, or to to from. It's for reinterpretation, but we already have reinterpret cast. So what's the difference between 
reinterpret cast and uh, when it was it's c plus plus 20 it's a c plus plus of a non-existing standard um, i mean i know that the standard is already a release it's like nobody properly supports it so that means it's not it does not exist okay so don't add me <laughs> uh all right so i'm using c plus plus 20. uh okay two bits from bits standards are social construct yeah uh hello liminaric please speak english this is an english speaking stream nobody understands you and you look weird you look weird trust me no, majority of people don't understand you. You just look like a weirdo. Speak English. Come on. Um, all right. So let's test it out. Let's test it out. So what, what, what we want to test out, actually? What we want to test out? Um, so examples. Do we have a dynamic array? So we have a hash maps, a hash map example, right? So the hash map example relies on allocators. Uh, I want to use new modes. You can buy them with points. Did you know that? I mean, come on. So you don't even have to. Okay, I, I know that I'm gonna actually lose a lot of subscriptions because of that, but you don't have to subscribe to use emotes. Like the points, this brain cells. You can use them to buy emotes just by watching the stream. You don't need to pay anything. Seriously. Come on. Uh, all right. So everyone is unsubscribing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Uh, okay. Okay. So um, let me try to start the compilation. Jiayang gifted a tier one sub to Super Cuba. Thank you, Jiang, for uh, supporting the channel and Super Cuba. Enjoy your emotes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, so, yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And hash map didn't really work. It didn't print anything. But we, what we can do now, we can just try to do tests. Uh, within the test, we have a hash map. Uh, and uh, everything seems to be working. Everything seems to be working. Everything seems to be working. Uh, mm -mm -mm. So now uh, I can try dynamic array. Uh, we can do something like custom eight or CPP. CPP. One more time. Uh, maybe I'm gonna call it eight or CPP. Right. So the way you're supposed to be working with all of that, right? You include aids. Right, aids.hpp, and you're using namespace aids. Maybe you not necessarily have to do that, right? So we don't want to pollute the um, the namespace. MAA is uh, Ada, but made for, uh, by Mother Russia and not Department of Defense. AIMA. Is that what it's supposed to be pronounced? AIMA. Um, so uh, let's create a dynamic array. So before uh, we can do all of that, Dynamic array. So we're gonna, what we're going to store in a dynamic array? Let's actually store some sort of like a structure um, that makes sense to store there, like a vector two, uh, and it's going to have float x y, uh, and let's actually store like uh, we have an array of vector twos, right? So it's going to be like something like points, right? Points, and all of that is actually filled with zero. So this is an empty array, right? So then, uh, what I can do here, I can probably push uh, some points there, I suppose. Back two is going to be a zero, zero, and I can push several points there. And then in the debugger, in the debugger waga, we can observe how the memory gets allocated and how some other stuff happens, and so on and so forth. So if I go to make file, I want to add ATER uh, to the build. Uh huh, it's gonna be Aether and let's compile. No, 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 that's not enough, bruh. You also have to add that to the list. That's right. And let's make this entire thing, and it doesn't fucking compile because you ha I, I forgot that I have to add eights here. So that will work now, hopefully. Uh, and also, I forgot S. Don't forget S, chat. Never forget S. 
and it does compile all right so do i compile that with uh, debug information yes i do so let's go into the debugger okay so uh zosin aids uh, it's not zosin aids it's actually rexin aids there we go uh, and examples um, mm, 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 GDB GDB Ata absolutely fucking amazing so we're gonna break on main right we're gonna break on main and we're gonna to enable and we're gonna just run this thing so we're gonna try to uh, print the points and just see what's inside so right now this thing is not initialized yet right so I'm gonna do n and if I take a look at the points one more time, we can see that this thing is initialized and I want to display it all the time on each individual step. If I make a first step, as you can see, we have already capacity. Uh, so this was pre-allocated on the first push. And now we have the data. We can look inside of the data. For example, we can take points uh, data. And uh, the thing about this stuff is that, oh, it, we, we know the type of this thing. This is actually pretty amazing. So and then we can say, I want to uh, like see how many points we have there. I can do something like this and it gives us the uh, points located in within the array. And then I can display that as well here. You know what? I, I think I don't want to lose this entire information. So I'm going to do eight or ADB, uh, not DB, uh, GDB, either GDB, and I'm gonna put all of that there. So it's gonna be a GDB initializing script. Thank you so much, Yang, for for actually making it, uh, making me start and using them. So, yeah, uh, they're they're very convenient. Um, all right. <coughs> Oh, all right. So break on main, and uh, I think it's GDB script mode. There we go. Uh, why chat is dead? By the way, is everything okay? Why did you guys stop shit posting? I remember you were shit posting. Did I start doing something boring? Um, all right. So, and then I also also to enable. All right. Um, okay. So as we insert more and more elements, as you can see, our array gets filled up. And then we just exit and, uh, you know, no nothing special happens. So now let's try to, like, implement a custom allocator. <clears throat> let's try to implement a custom allocator. Uh, it's going to be ator.cpp, right? So, and it's going to be just a region allocator. <clears throat> um, so we're going to allocate some sort of a buffer. Um, buffer. <laughs> if it's gonna use some sort of a global shit, is that a bad idea? I don't think so, actually. So uh, we're gonna have a capacity of like certain capacity, let's say, uh, define. It could be actually const because we're programming in C++, right? So we can do something like buffer capacity. So how much we're gonna we're gonna allocate? 640 kilobytes should be enough for everyone. Oh, I keep forgetting that in C++ you can do uh, stuff like that. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, you can use constcast anyway. What do you mean? Uh, I don't understand. Like, how does it? Uh, I'm out of the context. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I'm out of the context. Uh, buffer. Um, so this is a char. Uh, buffer alloc, <clears throat> and it's gonna accept a pointer to the buffer, right? So it's gonna accept pointer to the buffer and the size, uh, <clears throat> the size that you wanna allocate, right? So, um, it also needs to know the capacity of the shit, so that's going to be very interesting. So, but we know the capacity, right. So, um, so assert uh, size, it also needs to keep track of the size, uh, so let's introduce the size then. So, it's going to be buffer size initial zero. Uh, initially zero, so uh, let's include assert.h, uh, assert.h, and uh, we're going to assert that size, a buffer size, plus size should be less or equal than the buffer capacity, otherwise it doesn't make any fucking sense. Alright, I want to make a cup of tea. Mm, do people actually use C, C slash C++ to write software? I can't name even one important piece of software written in those languages. No, nobody uses these goddamn boomer languages. Keep programming in JavaScript. Mm. 
Oh, yeah, it's it's actually uh, the quote. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, it's just different languages cannot agree how to separate the uh, separate the literals. Different languages can't agree on how to do this kind of shit. Yeah. So, what are you guys doing? Are you guys working on your projects and stuff like that? Today's Saturday, I hope nobody's working. Ex except me. Uh, yeah. So everyone is working, I suppose. <laughs> or you you working on projects? Okay. You're building GCC on FreeBSD, right? So why are you building GCC on FreeBSD? I'm working uh, because of the holiday shift. Oh, interesting. Oh, you're also working on your thesis. Hmm. Mm. Does working on your own stuff count as working? No. Don't you just love having pointless conversation about of the definition of work? They are absolute favorite of mine, to be fair. I wasted so much time talking about what is work and what is not considered work. Uh, uh, if I'm working for myself, am I really working? Uh, deep philosophical idea, holy shit. Um, so I'm gonna go to the kitchen um, and uh, turn on the kettle to boil up some water and you guys keep having a deep philosophical conversation about definition of work. It's very interesting, trust me. Holy shit, the conversation is so deep, I can feel it in my throat. So, uh, here is this thing, uh, so and then we're gonna put it like that. So the result is, has to be uh, result buffer plus uh, buffer size, right? So uh, for those who doesn't know what I'm doing here, I'm just implementing like a linear allocator. To be fair, for a linear allocator, I could have just uh, created a separate structure. Maybe a separate structure would be a little bit better, better for this particular case. Um, not quite sure. So let's let's actually uh, see what we can do here. Uh, linear linear ator, right? So I think like having a structure always gonna be better right because you sort of like outline what you expect to see um so um and how are we gonna allocate it where do you usually allo allocate this kind of stuff where do you usually allocate this kind of stuff well and how big of a stuff you want to have here so let's uh parameterize capacity uh like with here capacity uh, and uh, then you can have a, um, you know, a buffer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So char buffer capacity size. Um, and we need to have separate functions here that accept this pointer, right? So you accept a linear allocator and Okay, that, that makes it kind of difficult to work with, but... Uh, okay, size t capacity. Might as well actually put it here, so capacity will go here. Mm -hmm. Linear allocator. Mm -hmm. I kind of want to accept this uh, as a as a pointer, uh, it's going to be a size. Uh, now you wish C++ had partially applied functions. I? You're talking about me? I don't wish anything. Um, so I'm just trying to implement a linear allocator. Or you wish to have that? Okay, hello, 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 welcome to the stream. Um, so, yeah. So I'm just thinking how what would be better how is gonna look better 
Mm. What is a linear locator? It's opposite of non-linear one, right? So the one that is described with a linear equation, right? If your locator is described with a quadratic equation, it's considered non-linear one. Do you, do you see what I mean? Anyway, so <clears throat> now, <clears throat> uh, maybe I should should have called it like region based. I, I don't care, whatever. Um, so what what matters is that I need to implement it. That's the only thing that matters here. Uh, assert uh, like exponential locator. Okay. Uh, all right. So size plus size less than equal than eight or capacity. Um, it's possible to do virtual on templated function. No, computer science haven't solved that problem. Uh, it's impossible to do that. Trust me. Um, <laughs> so this is capacity and I'm going to just return the result. Ater buffer plus Ater size. So this is what we're going to return here. Uh, it's a buffer, it's a size. Uh, then I take the size and I add the size here. And this is how I allocate it here. So you cannot free anything. So if you free in something, um, to be fair, I have a pretty epic idea. I have a pretty epic idea. So essentially in AIDS, in AIDS, look, 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 look. If your allocator does not support something, right? It doesn't support the allocate. Basically make it equal to null. And uh, if uh, the alloc function is uh, not equal to null, uh, right? If it's equal to null, we're not gonna do anything. That's actually pretty cool. That's fucking divine intellect, you see? So instead of implementing this stupid like, uh, you know, stub functions that do anything, just set it to null. We already have a wrappers anyway, and that wrapper is gonna fucking take uh, take care of that. Uh, I misunderstood how Ader was defined, that's why I was talking about partial applications. Ah, uh, yeah. So, by the way, this is not the final definition of the Ader, right? So, I'm experimenting with ideas, I'm experimenting with the designs. It may look crappy, it may not be like conventional or anything like that and this is because i'm experimenting with this thing i'm trying to see if we can come up with some something fresh something interesting something new something comfortable you know trying to do something differently right so once in a while in a while you you need to do something differently um, so otherwise you're gonna just re-implement stl which is not bueno in my opinion right so what's the point of re-implementing stl right we we'll already have stl Let's implement something new, right? And uh, to implement something new, we should not implement STL. That, this, this, that's why uh, allocator is so weird, because it's not STL. Um, right. So uh, I'm going to go to the kitchen and pour myself some water. So that means if I want to do something here, right? So I need to allocate this ATER, um, right? Uh, make linear ATER, right? And what I want to set here, I want to set a capacity here. Right? So we're setting a capacity. We're allocating it in dynamic memory using malloc, right? So we're pre-allocating some initial stuff. Uh, so, and what I'm returning here, I'm just returning linear ATER. Uh, and capacity is going to be capacity, uh, the size is going to be zero, and um, oh yeah, this thing has to be a pointer, yeah, I completely forgot, right. What's up, A-A-N-G-Q-Y-K-S, hello, welcome to the stream, uh, really like your nickname, by the way, um, alright, so, um, what's interesting is that, would be, 
Would it be nice to use the current allocator right now? Is that a good idea generally? I'm not sure if it's a generally good idea, but we can try. So we're gonna say alloc. Uh, so, but maybe no, let's do malloc size of, let me just capacity. Yeah, so this is gonna be our new allocator and we return a pointer to a linear eta. There we go. Uh, cool, 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 cool. Mm, so if I try to compile this entire thing, is it gonna compile? It seems to be compiling, but not here. Uh, because invalid conversion between these things. Okay, let's actually do static cast uh, between um, this thing to char. And doesn't really return anything, cannot convert. Oh, it has to be. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and I also want to introduce something like destroy. Um, linear eta. Uh, it's gonna be eta. Bring eta. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now in eights, if I want to replace the allocator, if I want to replace the allocator, what am I doing? I'm doing the context. Uh, make linear ADR and I'm allocating uh, 640 kilobytes, right? So this is what I'm doing here. So this is how we do here. And then uh, ADR, a lock, uh, and I called it what? I called it actually buffer, but I want to call it linear ADR. Uh, 11 linear ADR, and that should be it. So this is how you replace it, right? And from now on, it's going to be completely different. <clears throat> So, yeah, you essentially change the mode of the uh, aids. And that's a really strange way of doing that, but I guess that's okay. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, uh, let's try to recompile this entire stuff. And. Um, Oh yeah, I also have to uh, cast it to void, I think. I think otherwise it's not gonna... Ah, I see. So this is what I have to do here. Linear ATA. Uh, linear ATA. ATA. Right, and then I will just have to take a pointer to ATA. Right, and in here, invalid conversion between these two things uh-huh so this is this is why it makes it so difficult because c plus plus has a very strict type system right so uh the only thing i can do here is just accept void right and then um do something like this uh linear it uh, is gonna be ater Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Th oh my god, thank you so much, Yang. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm an idiot. Yeah, yes, 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 you're right. Um, a log funk. Mm. Okay, so that's that's a little bit closer to what I'm trying to make here. And it's probably gonna still complain about stuff. It's probably gonna still complain about stuff. Yeah, but I think we can try to force it to be s something here. Eh. Mm. Okay, so let's let's try to do that. This is going to be void, unsafe. Yes, I know that it's un it's unsafe. So this is going to be a pointer, pointer, linear ater, ater, static cast, static cast, linear. Oh my god, it's too verbose for my liking. Okay. What do I want here? And also we need to do this thing here. Yeah, cool. Uh, so if I try to now run this entire thing, I'm gonna try to run Aether. It didn't crash and it returned uh, like a non, uh, like zero exit code, which is already pretty good. Uh, can I do this thing like that? It's gonna be debug. Is it debug? Did I... Do I have GDB? Okay, so here's Aether. 
GDP. Uh, and ah, uh, yes, it's so bad actually. Yeah, it cannot see some of the scripts yet, so that's why it is like that. Okay, so let's not do the this thing here. Um, all right, so we're gonna break on main. Let's run it. Uh, okay, so if I try to print Ater, right, so there's a garbage here, which is intended essentially, right, and if I print Ater one more time, here it is, so we have the particular capacity, we have a particular buffer, so everyone is happy. So what I can try to do now, I can try to print, uh, what the hell is going on here? Uh, is everything okay in chat? Why chat is so crazy right now? Okay. So, uh, Aether, I want to take a look at the buffer. Uh, and uh, so here, buffer is a character, but we can do buffer size. Right, so right now we don't have anything. Uh, Aether. Uh, Aether size. Invalid number of repetitions. Okay, so that, that, makes, uh, that makes sense. So I can keep displaying this entire thing. Uh, and we are reassigning the um, allocator. Now, as we push uh, new values, right? Oh, it cannot access this memory anymore. But if I try to print this thing one more time, Okay, Aether size. I think that's what I need to display here instead. Okay, so... Okay, so that's actually pretty cool. So the, the allocator is growing. So it actually it's actually using the new allocator. And that's pretty cool. It is actually using the new allocator. I really like that. So, yep. But if we fair, like... It's still not particularly compatible with like everything we do here. It just looks out of place. Um, so I don't know how to describe that, but that's that's interesting. You can customize a locator here. Um, oh, and most importantly, by the way, is uh, you can read files into that. So one of the problems that I had with the standard library, with, with the AIDS library specifically, it's like read, uh, read file as sister, as string view, right? So it was used, uh, it was used in malloc, and for example, if I want to read it into a particular region, right, it wouldn't be reading it in a particular region, uh, but now I don't have to worry about that. So I can try to read the file now, and so let me see. Yeah, we have a special uh, special procedure called uh, procedure example, special example called cat, right? So uh, it's a cat, and it's essentially implementation of a cat, right? So it just cats the file. So now, uh, instead of using malloc for allocating all of that, we can use a regional allocator, and it's not really convenient, but I mean, it is what it is. So this is essentially how much you need to implement for, for the region allocator. Um, and also this function. It's, just, it's actually kind of too much in my opinion. But maybe, uh, maybe that's the cost you have for customizing the allocator. I, I'm not sure. Like I'm really, really not sure if what I'm doing is actually a good idea. Uh, which makes me worried a little bit. Um, Is it actually a good idea? Um, Ater buffer uh, make linear Ater, and I can provide a capacity here, right? Something like this. This is not Ater buffer, but rather the context, and then uh, Ater alloc function is linear Ater alloc, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it has to be a void outer. 
L8 on the L8 and it has to be a pointer to L8. Letter. Letter. Okay, cool. So now, uh, if I do cut, right, if I do cut, it will uh, save that into the into this linear allocator, um, which is kind of cool, I think. Oh, and it tries to free it. So this is actually kind of dangerous. I found a bug. So we should not like try to free it directly. Um, it's really strange, right? So what would be... So the, obviously this approach of uh, customizing allocators for the library is not working really well in C++, right? Obviously. So what would be like a more C++ way of doing that? To be fair, like, I don't know. Probably making the, the whole thing more complicated, that would work. Um, so, for example, let me see. Um, yeah, so this entire idea with the global context, it just doesn't fly, obviously. Like, it really doesn't fly. So, we need something else. <laughs> um, C++ way, just slap a template. And I, I guess that's the way we'll have to go, really. Uh, I guess that's the way we'll have to go, because... Yeah, I guess you need to like have control over the language if you really want to make it work. So, that's why I'm gonna just, you know, remove that. And I had like a completely different idea at some point. Uh, I had a completely different idea at some point. Uh, so let me show you the idea. Let me show you the idea that I had. So AIDS. Mm, read. So where's the function? Read file as sys, uh, string view. Right, here it is. Um, okay, so you would actually uh, pass an allocator here, as you usually would, right? So here's an ator, right? But you can, you want to have different allocators, right? So we want to have a different allocators. Uh, because of that, this entire thing is going to be templated, right? So this is the ator. But at the same time, you don't want to pass an ator like to each individual function here, right? So because of that, the default allocator is gonna be mater. The default allocator is gonna be mater and mater um, is gonna be a, an instance of the, uh, of the malloc allocator like this. Um, actually, it has to be a pointer. So it has to be a pointer. We, we're passing it by a pointer because we don't know the size of this thing. Uh, we don't know the size of this thing, so that's why I'm passing it like that. And by the way, like we could have um, maybe actually have an instance here. So in the C++ allocator, we are passing, yeah, we are actually uh, allocating it, uh, like creating the allocator in, um, inside of it. But what what is the uh, what is the mater? What is the mater class? Mater class is just gonna have two things as usual, two two methods. Right, and the method is going to be a lock, right, and it essentially has to be templated, I think. Uh, templated, uh, so it's going to have the similar signature. It's going to have a similar signature, so it's going to be a lock, and it takes uh, the amount of the things, uh, the amount of the things, and also dealloc, which takes the uh, the pointer to the thing, and also how many of these things we want to deallocate. Uh, and this should return like a pointer. Cool. So, uh, all right. So, and that's it. So that's the whole idea that I had at some point, but I was thinking maybe we can come up with something better, but something better can not be, I think, available in C++ because of the language itself. Right, so you see what I mean here, uh, right? Essentially, allocator, the type of the allocator uh, is uh, generic, right? And you pass the instance of the allocator as the, as the parameter, right? So this does not um, invalidate, this does not invalidate any of the existing calls to these functions, right? Because this is the, um, you know... Oh boy, oh boy, this is the default parameter. And I think we also should have some sort of like a default thingy here 
but it will depend if uh, the compiler will complain about that. Okay, and once you have that, right, instead of malloc, you would do something like uh, ater alloc, uh, and you would allocate uh, you, you would allocate the character, so uh, it's going to be something like that. So this is like a different approach. So is that a better one? Well, for C++ specifically, probably it is a better one. Right, and then here, um, wouldn't it work better with actual OP inheritance virtual methods? Better in terms of what? What's the criteria? Uh, okay. So we're going to do malloc size of t uh, less code generation slash duplication. I don't know, maybe. Um, but from my experience, every time you, t you start going into the virtual inheritance and stuff like that, it spreads like a disease. Like you start using that in one place and you cannot use that thing without using that in another place. And the whole code becomes this uh, pseudo OOP C++ thing. So I, that's why I'm kind of trying to avoid that. So yeah. Mm, multiply by count and there we go. So this is going to be that. And then you just want to free this entire thing. There we go. So, okay, so this should enable us with doing all of that. <clears throat> all right, let me see if it's compilable now. It is not compilable because uh, this entire thing is not displayable. Mm -hmm. Okay, so expected primary expression before char. Ah, shit. You cannot easily do things like that unless uh you put it like this right unless you put it like this and it still cannot is it a lock is it because it's a lock it's not really a lock so what does it want yeah it's too difficult for c plus plus to actually have something like that where you have like templated thing and within that thing you have a templated this thing so uh that means we'll have to work like this uh without templated stuff unfortunately so this is another limitation that we'll have to do <laughs> oh boy uh, okay cool so this one is going to be size but it's going to be ignored uh it's going to be ignored and here we're going to have an allocation and uh there we go okay so it seems to be working mm -hmm. Can't you just make the mater a templated struct? No, I cannot. Because in that case, that structure will be capable of allocating only one kind of object. How useful is that? It's useless. It's going to be able to allocate that exact one kind of object, but it needs to be able to allocate several of them. Template a lock. Where have you been? I already removed everything. Uh, holy shit. <sighs> it's fucking classic. <sighs> And, you know, uh, I'm gonna even guess, it's not gonna even work. Let, let me guess, right? So, it's not gonna even work. Um, it works, nice. Okay. Thank you so much. Uh, Alright. But how useful... Oh my god, it just adds more syntactic noise. I hate it. Uh, it's like it's almost the whole language forces you to program in that one fucking style like and if you try to do something slightly different no it's gonna be annoying it's gonna be confusing it's gonna be difficult no you cannot do that then. oh my god ah oh, it drives me nuts um 
Um, okay. So that's already better. That's already actually better. And um, so this could, this could be the thing. And I will have to write it like that every freaking time. Um, and the inference cannot be done based on um, based on the return types because it's a C++. Uh, right, so it has to be pointed by the way. Uh, yeah, void. Oh, and by the way, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I, I forgot that I have to actually return t in here. I have to return t in here, and uh, this is going to be count size of t. This is going to be count free pointer. Uh, so this is going to be a char. Can it be less annoying than that? Is it really has to be that annoying all the time? Um, static cast. But that's the thing here. We don't want to do wizardry. That's the thing here. I we're trying to avoid it. That's why I hate it. Uh, so when you're suggesting to add more wizardry, like no, we're trying to get rid of it. Um, okay. Mm, this is not the right thing to do. Uh, and now, is it really necessary to have that? Will it be able to infer that? No, it's it's just so it's so annoying. It's just being annoying. I hate it. All right. <sighs> and if I go to the cat, okay, so let's actually go to the cat and see how we can implement this entire thing. Let's see how we can implement this entire thing. So if I want to have my own region allocator, right? Um, so it's going to be struct region, right, and it's going to be a template uh, capacity, capacity, and uh, there we go. Mm -hmm. It's going to be size, it's going to be a buffer uh, capacity, and it has to be a templated thingy that allocates this entire thing, and uh, it's going to be a lock, and how many of them do you want to allocate? So it's going to be count. And in here, uh, what we're checking, right? So we need to construct a size uh, of the region that we want to allocate. The size of that region is going to be count multiplied by size of t, right? So here's the size of the region, and if uh, um, Collision. I already have a size. Uh, so let's do assert. Assert count multiply size of size of t should be less or equal than the, the whole capacity, right? So after that, the result is going to be essentially taking buffer plus size, right? Plus size plus size and casting all of that into this, right, casting all of that into this, and then to the size, we're going to be adding uh, count multiplied by that and just returning the result. And the allocation is not going to be a thing, right? The allocation is just literally going to do nothing. Type name T, dialloc, dialloc, please. Oh my God, dialloc. Okay. So T pointer uh, and also the size and all of that can be ignored and we're not doing anything literally in that particular regard. So this is the thing that we want to have here. Cool. So um, essentially here, we're just trying to deallocate this entire thing here, but we don't, we shouldn't deallocate it. We have to destroy it instead. And destroying actually also depends on the uh, allocator that you want to use. Mm. So uh, we have to do the content. You know, I'm going to actually comment out this entire thing. There we go. Uh, 
All right, so I'm gonna try to compile this entire thing. It seems to be compiling, seems to be compiling. And now if I wanna read something, I'm essentially uh, creating the region, region. So this is the region uh, of a particular size, right? So here's the region of a particular size. And there you go, it has to be like zero initialized and shit. And now if I wanna read that into the region, I just provide the region here. And it does compile, right? It does compile. Uh, and this is the new way of having uh, allocators, you see? So you have a region, right? And you allocate it on the stack, for example, right? You're allocating 640 kilobytes on the stack and you're reading a file into that stack. Uh, if you don't do that, this function will use malloc and read it uh, and will read it into the dynamic memory. If you want to read it into the static memory, you're going to be actually putting this allocator here. And there we go. So this is basically how it may work. So you, you basically can choose where you want to allocate it. You allocate it on a static memory, on a stack, or in a dynamic memory. Right. So, yeah. And uh, let's see if it's going to work or not. Uh, if it's going to work the way uh, I think it's going to work. Um, it's pretty interesting approach, not going to lie. Uh, but things that destroy... Uh, to be fair, I just explained the idea that I had for quite some time. I was actually thinking to implement it like that in AIDS for since pretty much the beginning. But I was thinking maybe we can come up with something better. But something better is kind of difficult in C++, I think. So, yeah. Anyway. So... Can you even allocate 600 bytes on the stack? Isn't that just going to allocate it on the heap? Uh, maybe, maybe it will, I don't know. So, I don't really know what exactly the modern compilers do, if you have a huge region on the stack. Uh, but whatever. Okay, so let's actually rebuild everything, just in case. Uh, it's gonna be cut, so let's just be that, break. Uh, if you move it to the main, it's just going to get automatic storage duration, but won't be on the stack, only the pointer to the rear. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, uh, let's run it, and uh, let's see what's gonna happen. Okay, so let's, let's break the region. So, region uh, is filled... Oh, okay. So, we can try to print its uh, capacity, its size. So the currently size of the region is that. Hello, Trizer down. Uh, welcome to the stream. Uh, now, right. What what the hell happened? Ah, I forgot to provide the file. Okay, so <laughs> just a second. Uh, so cat cpp. Right. So uh, there we go. So I'm gonna print the region size one more time. So you see, it's empty. And then we are about. Let's keep displaying region size. We are about to read the file. And it actually read it into the region. So we can now inspect the region. Uh, so it was buffer, right? It was buffer. And I'm going to say, please print region size of the buffer. Um, and I have to deallocate it. Uh, yeah, there we go. So here's the whole file inside of the region. <laughs> Uh, inside of the region. So I think this is a little bit better approach to, to allocators. Uh, right. So allocator has the following interface. Like you have to provide the templated alloc and templated dialog. Um, right. And for the users outside of the aids, we can also provide something like clean, right? Uh, that uh automatically uh sets the zero uh, the size to zero so basically you can keep reading files right you can keep reading files uh and maybe you can even do something something like this region clean so you clean this region uh like this is actually such a cool idea I like that um oh yeah by the way in the uh in the original implementation read file as a, a string right so we check if the allocator returned null, if it returns null, we assume that it's an error. So maybe we have to actually do that instead of assert. So look, uh, if uh, if this thing is greater than capacity, we instantly return null PTR. 
otherwise we return something else so essentially um this thing will return uh null if you ran out of region memory that's actually pretty cool so and yeah but again at any point you can decide okay I'll just use malloc instead and it will just use malloc instead so i think it's pretty cool and then just do it into the region so now we have like more like control over over all of that stuff what do you guys think is that is that a cool idea i mean it's an idea of a custom allocator like stl did that like way before me but they did that slightly differently they did it with this thing where you have to provide the type right so you're providing the type essentially but i am providing both the type of the allocator and the instance of the allocator and i think that's important it's important to have an instance in the allocator because the allocator may have a state that's why you have to constantly pass the instance of the allocator so we can have some sort of a state and you don't have to keep it in the global memory in the global variables and stuff like that you see what i mean so yeah mm. also like we still have to have this global variable here which doesn't really have any state particularly but uh we'll see we'll see um all right so um yeah that's that's the whole thing and it's a little bit more simple uh simple than i than whatever i was trying to come up before so here's the m tour uh so allo allocator tours okay and how many things i usually do have here so let me actually put them here allocators so it's going to be m tour by the way would it be a good idea if we make this thing a part of the aids as well so basically you have a fixed region right something like a fixed region uh yeah fixed region i can even call it fixed region as an opposite to dynamic region um dynamic region and guess how dynamic region would work it would use another allocator uh another allocator yeah moving region it's actually better moving region yeah, yeah. so th thank you this is actually way better it would use another allocator to reallocate its position so, and for example, and by default, by the way, it's, it can use Mater. So you have a, so yeah, it's a basically, you have an allocator, which is a malloc, and you have a wrapper around it, which defines a region, and it uses the underlying allocator for, to implement the linear allocator on top of it. And you can, holy shit, this is so, oh my God, I'm gonna, I want to implement that. So, <laughs> by the way, did, did you watch Alexandrescu Composable Allocator Stock? It's basically, no, I haven't watched it. Really? Did I reinvent it myself? Holy fuck. It makes so much sense. Uh, do I have Alexandrescu intellect? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Like, I just intellectually masturbate until I come up with something interesting. So that's what I do, essentially. Um, fucking composable allocators and shit. And you can use... I, I don't know, you can use fixed region to implement moving region. Okay, let's actually implement it and see how it's going to go. Um, so uh, what, what is it gonna, going to have? It's going to have the allocator, like underlying allocator that it uses, right? So, um, and of course, initially it is going to be filled with zero. So, and initially filled with zero um, mater, um, right? It's, it doesn't do, it doesn't do anything. And uh, we're going to have a wrapper. Mm, that's exactly what I was thinking as well. Okay. Uh, all right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Alloc size t count, and uh, what we're essentially using um, is template alloc size. Uh, well, we can just you know pass the count here because it's gonna calculate the actual size um, by itself yeah we need to keep track of the uh capacity uh what's hpp it stands for huge pp so that's what it stands for 
so sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh okay, so that's <clears throat> I don't know to be fair, it doesn't really stand for anything if you think about it, right? So essentially in C, right, in C there are two uh kind of files, H and C, and this one is a header, right, and this one is just C. And C came in and it introduced CPP file. And to make the things symmetrical, they renamed uh, they renamed H files to HPP to indicate that it's a header for C++ as an opposite of a header for C. So I don't think it you know you know means anything in particular. What about CC file? Mm, I don't know. What does it stand for? Like yeah, I, I saw people doing CC. What? Why did they do that? Like, what's what's up with that? Should fixed region be thread safe? Uh, I don't know. Probably not. Because like if I was doing multi-threading with fixed regions, I would just create a, like a fixed rigid per thread and don't think about that. So yeah, I don't think it has to be. But um, eh, you can just wrap it in mutex. I don't know. Um, Mm -mm, mm -mm. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's go back and essentially we assume that this entire thing is going to be filled, uh, like everything is going to be initialized with zero, right? So and if you're trying to allocate something, um, just wrap it in mutex, that's how I end up global. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, so dialog is not going to do anything as well, so it's going to be just size. Um, I'm going to scope paste. If you think about it, like moving region, moving region, uh, it's pretty much the same interface uh, in implementation apart from the alloc. Uh, but the problem with the moving region is that, right, so it invalidates the pointers every time it expands. Mm hmm. So the question is how useful this thing is, right? I don't think it's that particularly useful. Uh, it's an interesting idea, but by itself, I don't think this is particularly useful. So I'm not gonna implement it right, right now. I'm gonna implement it a little bit better later. So we'll probably need some sort of a different region that uses another allocator to pre-allocate fixed re region or something. You know, um, so yeah. So I'm gonna actually postpone that idea for a while. Uh, but overall, it's an interesting idea nonetheless. So this is a fixed region, right? So, and there we go. So this is how much we have. Mm -hmm. So I'll just allocate it. Cool. I really like that. I really like that. So, and in here, by the way, um, I think I want to infer, not, not defer, but rather actually like destroy uh, content. Right, instead of instead of uh, calling free directly because we're starting to have the, all of these allocators and let's go through the aids and find all of the places where we call malloc all right so okay we don't call malloc anywhere like what about calloc um okay so speaking of hash maps right speaking of hash maps <laughs> How are we gonna handle the hash map? I suppose maybe the hash map should accept the allocator right here. Uh, should accept the allocator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we extend the capacity. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should start with the dynamic array. Maybe we should start with the dynamic array. Mm -hmm. And here we have data capacity. Dynamic array by itself could be a locator itself, but yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, type name uh, Ata. And again, I really don't want to force people to um, 
you know, allocate, like I set the allocator, right? So maybe the, the way I'm gonna go about that is that I'm gonna do it like that. Right, I'm gonna do it like that, but is it gonna work if you just do something like this? How does it work? Re-implementing STL is in progress. Uh, am I re-implementing STL? Yeah, I'm, I am re-implementing STL, yes, I know. Uh, re-implementing STL is my favorite. So, if you have a structure full, right, and you have a bunch of numbers in it, A and B, right, and if you do something like this, uh, right, so what is it going to be equal to? What is it going to be equal to? Print len um, std out uh, full a b. I'm doing that so the compiler won't optimize all of that away. Hopefully, hopefully it won't optimize that away. And uh, let's try to rebuild this entire stuff. <laughs> right, and uh, let's go to the debugger. So it's going to be cut. Break main, run to enable, and if I look into this thing, it's zero zero. But at the same time, if I set their values to something, to their default value, like 69 for 20, will it actually preserve if I initialize it like that? I think it would, uh, but I don't remember to be fair. So, so that's the problem. I don't remember if it would. So I think it should. Mm. Yeah, it does. Okay, it was super easy to check. So essentially, but oh my god, it actually starts to um, go into very unpleasant territory. We go into very unpleasant territory um, because I still because this is not like. It's not about the default values. Sometimes I want to be able to allocate just a memory, right? Memory, and fill it with zeros and cast reinterpret it to array of some sort of structures. And I want these structures to be valid anyway. So that means the allocator, which is set to null here, has to be a valid, uh, has to be a valid structure. Dynamic array with a null allocator has to be a valid structure. I think. I think it has to be a valid structure. Mm, the question is, how do we handle it in that case? How do we handle it in that case? Yeah, it just makes it complicated. It's an interesting idea, but just like the way I handle this thing here is just not going to fall. Is the complex complexity reasonable? To be fair, for data structures like dynamic array and hash table, right, using anything but mater doesn't really make, make that much sense anyway. You see what I mean? Right. So using customizable allocator, it only makes sense for such functions as read file as string view. Right, read file as string view and whatnot. Where can I, can I get it? Right file as string view right where you don't need to do reallocations or anything like that you just want to uh, you want to have something like this that will give you some some memory right that's what you want you just want some memory but for things like dynamic array because dynamic array is allocated by itself right and hash table also allocated by itself it's kind of they themselves could be allocators so that's really that's really interesting thought so yeah so maybe by default they should use major and don't think about anything <sighs> don't think about anything because uh, like fixed region doesn't really make sense for dynamic array because essentially it will allocate a little bit of itself and then copy itself on the on the next thing and so on and so forth mm. what was unique before i think I think it was initially that because like on 
I saw that nickname on the day the account was created. Actually. Uh, Alright, so let me actually quickly go to the kitchen. I need to check something super quick. Mm -hmm. Hello. Okay, so um, <sighs> what I'm thinking, what I'm thinking is that this allocator idea is actually super cool. Uh, I really like it, but the allocators that we came up with are not really compatible with dynamic arrays or anything like that. As a matter of fact, the the mater, yeah, um, the, the dynamic array itself is an allocator, so that's, that's, yeah, we'll, we'll have to. So I'm going to actually include the, uh, the, the new allocator into the uh, aids, uh, but then I'm going to keep an eye on all of that here. So uh, I'm not going to reuse, I'm gonna, not going to make the allocators customizable for dynamic arrays yet. Um, so that's going to be the idea. You see what I mean? Uh, so and then later, maybe it's going to become more visible. So it it, I, it feels like I just don't have enough information to make a decision about all of that. And by the way, maybe it's, the time has come to get rid of the stretch buffers and everything that is deprecated here. So that should be a pretty good idea. So um, that means if I'm going to remove everything depre deprecated, uh, it's going to be the release 1.0. Yeah, breaking changes, that means it's going to be 1.0, that's for sure. Um, Alright. So let me go through all of the destroy functions. So here is the free. Mm -mm. Major release 1.0, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what we're going to have. So to be fair, in all of these places, I want to start using display for the string function mm -hmm. eight prime since we're gonna have 1.0 right since we're gonna have 1.0 I want this thing to be deprecated as well so this is uh, this doesn't make any sense actually destroying this thing doesn't make much sense in my opinion uh, Anabothu, what's up Hello, how are you doing? Mm. But you do need to de uh, destroy them at some point, right? So. I don't know. Um. Okay. What's up, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? <sighs> You know what? I want to make a small break because I need to pee. <laughs> so I'm really sorry. Uh, so two minutes. Not really. I'm, I'm gonna actually prepare my uh, my tea, my tea vessel, and then I'm gonna go. So while I'm preparing the tea vessel, does anyone have any questions about what we're doing uh, and stuff like that? Maybe it's because of me. Isn't no? It's not because of you. Always glad to see you here. Uh, it's because of me drinking too much tea, so, yeah. Mm. Well, okay, are hard, to be fair. How is life? Ah, as usual. As usual, just streaming every day. Uh, shit posting on the internet, working on different projects and stuff like that. Um, the usual, the usual. Nothing changed much for eight years, I suppose. <laughs> alrighty, alrighty, alrighty. So, uh, let me uh, go. 
So I'm gonna, how, how many minutes? Uh, let's say three minutes. I think three minutes should be okay. Uh, right. Mm, so we report something to Ray Leap or uh, start a new game. Um, to be fair, there is no really good decoupling of my game logic from SDL to just uh, go ahead and replace SDL with Ray Leap. So I probably won't do that, right? So, and if I'm gonna do that, I probably will have to put like more layers of abstractions to actually separate SDL from the game. Um, so more likely, if I'm gonna use Rayleap, I'm gonna use it for a different project. Rayleap is a C library for making games. Um, so it, I, I, for, for a second, I, uh, for a second, for some time, I thought that it's basically like SDL, but uh, more modern, but apparently it's like um, it's more high level level than SDL, right? It's a game for making a game, a library for making games, and it's a little bit more high level than SDL. Uh, you you can have an access to uh, to OpenGL, I think. Oh yeah, you can have shaders, right? So in SDL you cannot have shaders, but in ArrayLib you can. Um, and apparently, according to this architecture, as far as I can see, it abstracts you away up completely from OpenGL, uh, which is not a bad idea generally, I think, because sometimes I just don't want to deal with OpenGL madness. Mm. I was looking at it and I really disliked it. Why? So what exactly you didn't like about Rayleigh? Um I know nothing about Rayleigh, by the way, so I'm just curious, like, what exactly um, could be potentially not good about it uh, is it too high level because that could be a thing that i personally may dislike about this library it could be too high level and it would be enforcing a particular style of development on me which i generally don't like uh, it looks like uh, p5.js for c what is p5 is that like a process thingy p5.js let me take a look um it's a JavaScript library for creating coding with a focus on making coding accessible and inclusive for artists, I see. Uh, interesting. Examples. It's processing. Okay, I see. Um, mm, 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 I cannot rotate it. I cannot rotate it. Even in crystal, I can rotate the crystal. Can your P5 do that? Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> okay, I see what it is. Should I actually check it out at some point? I think I should check it out at some point. That looks interesting. Uh, all right. So I see it's just like a P5 form for C. <sighs> Very well then. Um, anyway, so let's go and P. Uh, have fun.
I'm really sorry for being too early, but the AA finished one minute later. Uh, alrighty, so uh, let's continue. So what I want to uh, do now, uh, I want to just go through this entire thing and clean it up. Don't be sorry for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, but I am Canadian. I'm sorry for everything. I'm not actually Canadian. It's a, it's, a, it's a running joke on this channel. I'm actually Russian. And that's why I'm not sorry for anything. Uh, Russians are never sorry for anything. It's a joke as well. Um, it's been months that I don't check Discord anymore. Interesting. Are you on Telegram these days? Um, he's Russian, he hacked uh, solar winds. Did I? I didn't even notice. Um, Alright. So here's the malloc. What about Kalloc? Okay, so in... Oh yeah, realloc. Yeah. So essentially, like specifically for dynamic arrays, specifically for dynamic arrays, uh, I'm going to hard code using Mater, right? We're still not going to use like Ellipse directly. We're going to use that through the interfaces of um, uh, of the allocators. So Mater, since Mater is like a global variable here, so I can just, just use it. Um, mm -mm -mm. Now it's going to be just a look, just a look. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, again, so I'll have to uh, create a new capacity. So it has to be a new capacity, uh, size t, and then it also has to be new data. Uh, new data. Mater alloc. That's very strange. Uh, alloc, uh, and we'll have to specify this thing, and how many of these things we want to uh, allocate. We want to allocate the new capacity. Right, so we created a new capacity and here's the new data. Um, and what's interesting is that, what if it fails, right? So, uh, well, Mater may, may not fail, that's why we hard coded it here, so it doesn't, doesn't really matter. Um, after that, I need to copy uh, old data to the new data using old capacity. And after that, I can just use new data and new capacity. A new capacity. There we go. So that's pretty cool. So that's a user's reallocation, hopefully. Uh, we don't need that stuff anymore. Everything seems to be compiling. Cool. Everything seems to be compiling. So then, do we have. Uh huh. Calloc. Here's the calloc here. Nice. Uh, here is the calloc. And for this entire stuff, so the calc kind of expects us to have it zero initialized. I see. So, but this is something that we'll have to do ourselves. This is something that we'll have to do ourselves. It's going to be bucket, uh, mater, alloc, and we are allocating these bad boys. Hash initial capacity, right? Maybe it also makes sense to... <gasps> what if we make the part of interface the default value? Is that a good idea? And then when you allocate something, it's going to be also, you know, initialized with that. Uh, is that a good idea? So, and then we can just iterate. Right, uh, result i... Is that a good idea? Maybe not. What do you guys think? So if I want to like zero initial, it, it will actually zero initialize it automatically, I think. Uh, well, I mean, no, uh, I don't think I'm going to go that route yet. Um, 
without any defaults. Uh, catalog. Okay, so I allocated this entire thing. And then I'll have to do mem set. Nipsey gifted a tier 1 sub to Daniel42. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, supporting the channel. And Daniel42, welcome to our epic alligator club. Uh, all right, so my kettle is ready, by the way. I'm gonna go quickly pour some hot water and I'm gonna be back. Uh, hopefully, you won't miss any. I'm back to that. How everyone is doing? Did you miss me? Did you miss me? I'm back. Dun, 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 dun. So, yes. Very well then. Um, oh yeah, the new pop champ is actually pretty cool. So yeah, it's it's as close to the original as it can get actually. So. But we all know that uh, Twitch is not going to keep it, right? Twitch is not going to keep it, unfortunately. Uh, mem set. Uh, so we have to set the buckets to zero. I don't like it. Well, it is what it is. Um, so even if you don't like it, it is still closer to the original than any of the previous poke champs. So I don't think my statement contradicts to your opinion about poke champ. So not saying it's perfect, it's just it's closer to the original one as possible. Mm, I didn't like this, but I like the idea of changing every day. Yeah. It's not a bad idea. Maybe something uh, something's gonna be better in the future. Mm. So, as I said, like on, on Discord, actually, uh, you can easily quantify the popularity of particular POC champs. So, essentially, after this uh, session of con continuously rotating the POC champ, um, the like Twitch will have actual data on which POC champ was the most popular one. Just basically looking at the rates of usage of the POC champs, right? Uh, so you can just build like a graph and correspondence which PogChamp was the most popular, which one the most used. And maybe like after a month or several months, they, they're going to just pick the one that was the most used one and they're going to just stick with it. So it's actually a pretty cool, uh, uh, cool way of surveying the community without doing an actual survey that annoys everyone, right? right. So it's like a survey in disguise. Like you're answering, you're actually participating in that survey just by using the emote, right? It's actually a very interesting idea. And it feels like for me, at least, that that's exactly what Twitch is doing. But I don't know for sure. I'm just speculating. So maybe that's not what they're doing. Um, anyway. So um, I need to set everything to zero. Uh, okay. Mm. All right. So new hash map. So this is the reallocation. It's a reallocation. Why exactly I'm using? Mm. Okay. So there is a new hash map. And it's very important to... All right, so I'm gonna do the following thing. I'm gonna do a uh, new, maybe, maybe bucket, new buckets. And it's gonna be just mater, um, a lock, bucket. Maybe bucket, maybe bucket, and it's going to be a capacity. Um, size T, new capacity. 
as a capacity, old capacity multiplied by two, right? New capacity, and we provide this new capacity like this. Because um, in C++ you lose your uh, the frustration for using such a bad language. <laughs> yes, true. That's exactly what happens if you use C++. Uh, Where's my okay? There we go. <laughs> so I need a way to zero initialize everything, but I feel like. It's not a particularly wise idea. Uh, all right, so I'll still have to do that. Okay, so here's the new capacity. I'm locating with the new capacity, and I need to mem set new buckets. Uh, so it's going to be like this: new buckets to zero uh, of the new capacity multiplied by size of a single bucket, right? So it's going to be actually maybe bucket. Cool. Um, so this is how I in initialize all of that. And now new hash map is essentially uh, new buckets, right? New buckets and new capacity. New buckets and new capacity. And then you iterate through, uh, through the uh, old buckets. And then you free everything here. But instead of using free directly, you would do something like mater deallocate, deallocate. Uh, right, deallocate, and you also have to provide the size, uh, the old size, the old capacity. And then you replace new hash map with a new capacity. Makes sense to me. Makes sense to me. Um, so this could be const, and this could be const. And this is why we people advocate for, you know, for using const. East, east const, I think, I think, uh, I think this, will, this is what they say because it just get uh, closer to the semantic for, for the pointers, right? So, but we're not going to use it. We're going to put it here. Um, so I guess that's it. This is going to be calloc and uh, free when we're using free. So this one doesn't make sense. This one does make sense, but I have to use mater. So mater deallocate. I'm deallocating this entire thing and I'm using the capacity of the dynamic array. Another three. Uh, it's a hash map. Right, so I use mater deallocate. Oh my god, Emacs all of a sudden decided to actually uh, like turn on auto completion. I don't fucking know why. Okay, so that should be it. Um, okay, deallocate. Di dialogue. I think this is what it was. I think it was dialogue. Okay, so mater no matching function dialogue because I have to provide the capacity or something. What do you want for me? So, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. It has to be T. Use Visual Studio Code. I already used it, by the way. Uh, mem set pointers. So it expects. V uh, it's too much text. Uh, clearing an object. Clearing an object of non trivial type. Use assignment or value in into. Okay. Holy shit. Okay. Um, so let me actually. Yeah, I think it would make sense to extend the interface of the allocators and accept the default values here, right? So just accept the default values here uh, and just have a result here and uh, iterate through all of these things yourself. Uh, count plus plus i and it's going to be a result uh, def. Let's return the result. So we're also going to be doing it like that. 
and that means uh, when we're doing fixed region in a fixed region we also have to uh, you know initialize everything everything first so we're doing that and uh, here we're accepting the default value uh, and that's pretty much it uh, okay so mem set and instead of doing mem set i don't have to do that anymore because allocator allocation already automatically sets it to zero so i don't have to worry about that uh which is kind of cool i'm not gonna lie uh, it's gonna compile hopefully and that means i can go back to just doing something like this right new capacity no new capacity is capacity multiplied by two and here a capacity multiplied by two don't have to worry about that anymore uh, so there was like new buckets, don't need that, don't need that, cool, um, nice, everything works correctly. So now allocator also initializes everything. And modern CPP allocators, they introduce methods construct for such purpose. Cool, but we don't use constructors. Uh, so there's no need for this kind of shit. Uh, well, we kind of use them here, but I mean, it's just... I mean, we probably can do something like this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, go. Uh, so, alloc, uh, malloc. This is the only place where we use malloc. There's no usage of calloc. And free is used in well it's used in this place as well but this function doesn't make any sense like i really don't like it um it should be deprecated or something that's for sure well i mean i can do something like this i can still do mater uh, dialog right and i'm deallocating this data of this particular size right and uh, it's not going to work because uh, we have a const situation here. Um, all right. Should, should it be possible to delegate const as well? What if we overload this entire thing? What if I just like, literally overload it and this one is going to be just const? And const essentially... Yeah, so... Yeah, in my opinion, it should be able to deallocate de like a const shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and for for that one, we, we don't uh, we don't deallocate anything because the pointer is a number anyway. Maybe for your allocator to deallocate a pointer, you don't need to modify the pointer itself. Like you, you just need a number. So and if the number is const, why the fuck can't you you know deallocate it? It just makes so much sense in my opinion, right? So, um, but specifically for Mater, we'll have to do const cast. So, uh, point is just a number. Yes. Do you, you you disagree with me? You disagree with that statement? You think pointer is something more than just a number? Well, you can argue that pointer is a number plus type information, but it's specifically in only in C, in C++. Um, okay, so uh, let me see. So what we did here, we introduced the uh, allocator mechanism. The pointer itself is just the number though. Yeah. It's just a number. Mm. Okay, let me uh, go to the tests and make sure we didn't break anything. It cannot be a number because it doesn't satisfy element to elementary properties of a number. It depends on the definition of a number, I suppose. Uh, 
so everything seems to be working um, and I want to see what we've got uh, expand so this is the only thing we introduced here so you just so didn't weird that camera <laughs> god damn it uh, all right so let's make a release chat let's make a release um, So what did we introduce? Uh, we introduced uh, Mater, right? Uh, I meant that pointer plus one is not a pointer. How is that another pointer? What do I mean? Um, so I have this, right? Uh, and it's still a pointer, is it not? I think it's still gonna be pointer. It is not aligned. What do you mean by aligned? Uh, you mean by pointer? You probably mean void, right? Is that what you meant? Like, but I, I think I'm not understanding you. Uh, in numerical sense, mm, I think I'm completely failing to understand you. I'm sorry. I'm not smart enough. Um, all right. So here's the structure, and uh, we introduced Mater and Fixed Region. Fixed Region. Uh -huh. So here are the structures, and... Mm -hmm. So read uh, file as string view. Read file as string view. Uh, make a locator for uh, customizer, customizable. There we go. Uh, customizable. Uh, and that's pretty much everything we did in that release, right? And another thing I want to do, I want to uh, deprecate, destroy uh, for string views, right? Because uh, on the next release, I want to remove this function because, wait. Mm. But yeah, yeah, we don't need to do that since I allowed deallocating the constant values. Well, 037 never happened, okay? So 037 never happened. Uh, okay, uh, I'm gonna actually make a note about that uh, here. Uh, 037 never happened. There we go. See? Never happened. Um, Alright. So, cool. So tests, I'm going to check the tests. Uh, well, it is true for 027 as well. So I don't know what you guys are talking about. I don't know what you guys are smoking, but never happened. Uh, so let's take a look at this thing. Okay. So UTF 8. Looks cool. I only just 300 words I say on why it never happened due to... Sure. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send it to tomorrow. Um, um, all right. Oh, I also updated some of the examples. Do I really want to update the examples? Maybe not. Yeah. By the way, in examples, I think we need to go through some of them because um, we need to make sure that we're not using free or, or malloc directly, right? Free or malloc directly. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, probably don't. Uh, okay. Uh huh. Everything looks okay. Unistd win. Oh my god, I probably have to go and clean a lot of stuff up here. Okay, so we only used that thing in the cat so far, So, but here we don't have to do that anymore. So essentially, uh, I just have to do destroy. Um, destroy content. content. That's what I needed to do here. Mm -hmm. 
And I... Zero mm -hmm. thirty eight uh, release. So let's actually also put change lock here. Um, let's push that chat. Are you ready? The eights have been released. There we go. The eights have been released. Uh, go grab the latest version, latest version of eights, and let's try to upgrade our game with the latest eights. Uh, so just to test if they work correctly or not. Right. So um, something, 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 uh, and let's just put it here. This is. This was not the right way to put them. Uh, SRC, AIDS, and let's just move it here. Replace it, of course. So here are the new AIDS, right? So we introduce the locators and shit. And uh, yep, 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 yep. Uh, I'm going to try to recompile this entire stuff. Uh, so we're going to actually do full recompilation, recompile everything. And it's already breaking. Unused parameter count. Holy shit. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Wait, how did that get into the release? Like, wh what? I think my my flags are actually really weak. Yeah, my, my flags are really weak. All right. So uh, let's actually fix all of that here. Um, so let's fix all of these things. So, uh -huh. but apart from that, so essentially it only complained because I had very, um, uh, like very strict flags enabled, right? Uh, very strict flags enabled. Uh, like we can disable these flags and it will compile anyway. So it's not that big of a deal. We can, we can make uh, like another another release here. So don't worry, it's gonna be 39. Okay, so and then uh, I'm gonna go and do... Um, well, this is not what I wanted. I wanted to go somewhere here, something debug. And nothing is broken. That's actually pretty cool. Look at that. Nothing is particularly broken. And that's super cool. Uh, another release, nah, nah, nah. Another, uh, the next release is going to be just fixing uh, warnings, right? Fixing warnings. Uh, eight. There we go. So I'm going to actually copy paste them back. So these are the changes that we need to make to make it work. Maybe before actually releasing, um, we should test aids on like projects that, where I use them. Um, right. So uh, it's going to be a release 039 uh, fix common GCC warnings, right? And this is a new release, right? So yeah, and it's going to be 39. Mm. Uh, all right. Mm, release. Join us now and share your software. You'll be free, hackers. You'll be free. The new version of AIDS have been released. So yeah, 039. So let's go back to a something, right? Um, RMS mode is back. I mean, it's BTTV. It's a third party thing. It's a third party thing. But it's failing on Windows. Uh, where is the issue? Did you submit an issue? What? what? Where is the issue? I didn't see an issue. Where is it? Where is it? No issue, no problem. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, okay. So uh, let me see. Let me see. Uh, it's going to be something. Uh -huh. 
something, something, something. SRC. Okay. Cool. So what we're doing here, we are just upgrading aids. And the reason why I wanted to upgrade aids uh, is because I'm about to make another release with backward incompatible um, compatible changes. The Windows is failing. Oh, I see. Okay, I've, I, I forgot that I have a CI on it. Oh my god, I have a CI there. Holy shit. Okay, uh, so let's create this thing here. Mm -hmm. So I still thought that I don't have a CI there. Alright, so it's gonna be AIDS. Let's take a look, let's take a look. Um, so I'm still in a... Sale traducer ice agent Ganha feel sakimant. Is that yet another if Soding translates that we want Zulu? Is that one of those? By the way, thank you, thank you so much for 19 months. Holy shit of uh, Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And welcome to our epic almost said eight club to our epic, <laughs> to our epic C++ club. Yes. Uh, so yeah. Uh, Portuguese. Uh, God damn it. All right. Uh, but at least I predicted that. Okay. Uh, at least I predicted that. It's, it's a classic. It's a classic debate. I knew it. Um, anyway, we won Zulu. All right. So let me take a look at the uh, at the uh, build. Th thank you, by the way, Kolumbetka. Thank you so much for uh, bringing my attention to that. So what do we have? Error. Count uh, unreferenced formal parameter. Okay. So is that the same shit as it was before? It's actually is it actually thirty nine? Uh -huh. Is it that? Yes, it is thirty nine. Um, that's really strange. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the eight then. Uh, one hundred forty-seven. Excuse me. Why GCC didn't complain about that one? Like, it's so strange. GCC complained about this one, but didn't complain about this one. Oh, this is probably because I didn't use it. But I didn't use that one either. Or did I? Okay, so, sure. Uh... Is there anything else? Uh... Uh, while compiling class... I think that's the only one, isn't it? I think it's the only one that I have to worry about. So here's the dialog. Okay. Uh, and this function, no worrying. Okay. All right, uh, okay. Fix the MSVC warnings. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. 040 uh, fix msvc warnings and i'm gonna push that right into the repo and this time i'm gonna create a pull request i think um stream will end on 042 <laughs> no no no. i plan to do a major release uh, on today's stream And major release is going to in, is going to include backward incompatible changes because I think the time has come to make some backward incompatible changes. Yes, we've been waiting for them for so long. Yes, 1.0 is going to be shipped today, officially. 
Uh... Alright, we're waiting for macOS and Windows, I suppose. Windows is okay, actually. Windows is okay. Uh, Windows is okay. So essentially, in for 1.0, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna simply remove everything that is deprecated. Right, deprecate. Right, everything that is deprecated is gonna be removed and uh, this is gonna be called 1.0. And you know why uh, I'm doing it this way? So essentially that gives you uh, an opportunity to upgrade to the major version, the way you do that. So you migrate to the previous version before, to the version before the major release, right? And that version uh, will uh, basically throw a bunch of warnings. So you fix all of these warnings, and then once you fix the warnings, you can safely transition from that version to the major one. So this is why I'm doing it this way. Make sense? So the way I introduce backward incompatible changes is that first I deprecate things and then I remove them in the major releases. So I think it's a pretty good practice. Right. So the uh, so what if I go from, you cannot do that. So I should probably document that. So the official way of migrating from minor release to the major one is that you first migrate within the minor release to the last minor release Right, that's how we have to do that. And then from the minor release to the major one. So we have to do that in two steps. So that's the like official AIDS way of doing that. Uh, but I haven't documented it yet, so yeah. Uh, all right, so everything looks okay. okay. And everything seems to be compiling. Okay, so let's do the major release. How about that? Mm. Uh, so, deprecated. So let's go through all, everything that is deprecated. So we have a namespace deprecated, so you're not supposed to be using this structure. And you're not supposed to be using that. You're not supposed to be using that. Everything, all of that shit is deprecated. Don't use that, please. So this function is also deprecated. Don't use that. Uh, deprecated and um, ah, ah, deprecate. Oh, that's it. We didn't really have that many deprecated things. That's actually pretty cool. Uh, yep. So that's the major release. Uh, all right. So let me go to the test and just test everything. Just to make sure that everything works. Uh, and in examples, I'm also going to test everything and uh, cool. Uh, and oh, by the way, I forgot to fetch the latest merged stuff. Mm, merge origin master and uh, just remove that. One, one, one. Uh, mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, it's HPP. So this uh, is going to be like this. So I need to know what exactly we removed here. Um, uh -huh. Oh shit. Did. Um, can I just pop this out? Uh, it's so so stupid. A git is so stupid. Oh my god, it's so dumb. Um, all right. I left for thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a road buffer. Uh, forgot to do that. For fuck's sake. Okay. All right. Um, so maybe I have to do that thing first then. Um, it's too many things. It's too many things. Oh my god. Oof, 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 oof. Mm -hmm. All 
update uh, the version number. Already exists, okay. So, uh, can I merge origin master then? <sighs> okay, I also need to revert this buffer. Yes, finally. Oh my god, so hard. Uh, okay. What did we remove? What did we remove? Stretch buffer. Uh, remove stretch buffer. Uh, remove args pop. We can do it like that. Yeah. So to discriminate between function calls and uh, structures. All right, so this is, I hope, is the official release, 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, 1. 1. Release. And this is what we did here. What's up, Nutrix Life? So I'm going to create a pull request and we're going to wait for the continuous integration. And while we're waiting for the continuous integration, I'm going to copy paste the library to something just to see if it doesn't break something, right? Uh, yeah. Cool. Are you okay, Jean? Do you, do you need an ambulance? So I hope, hope you're okay. I hope you didn't break anything. Um, oh, okay. Very well then. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Be careful. Have you watched the PewDiePie, PewDiePie's video about him breaking his ass? It's, it's very dangerous, actually. I'm not gonna lie. Um, Um, oh, okay. Very well then. Uh, mm, to be fair, like in twenty, yeah, in twenty twenty one, only only boomers probably watch PewDiePie because it's such an old YouTuber. Who remembers him? Am I right? Uh, okay, so I think everything builds successfully, uh, which is nice. And we are about to make the official release. We are about to make official release. Where's it going? Are you ready? The 1.0 AIDS release is officially out. Finally, it is out. Been watching this dude since he played Happy Wheels. I've been watching him since the Amnesia times. Um, all right. <clears throat> uh, two, 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 two. All right. Yeah, AIDS version one has been officially released finally, and uh, something works on the uh, on the latest AIDS release, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, upgrade, upgrade AIDS 0360 to 1.0 straight up, and we're gonna push that right into the repo. Uh, can't wait for the version two. Well, we're gonna have a version two when we accumulate enough deprecated uh, features, right? Because we're gonna be refactoring things, we're gonna be changing things. Um, so yeah. 
So, and I'm gonna put this thing here. Three hours refactoring allocators. That was insane. I really like that. Remember the time uh, where his entire room was full of cardboard pink? <laughs> that was weird. Cardboard. Oh, yeah, I remember that time. It's the time of controversies. Yes, yes. It was. Yeah. That was really interesting. He, he was going through a really strange period. Like, socially and mentally, I think. <laughs> so, yeah, that was interesting. Um, <clears throat> very edged content. Yeah, you, you cannot have such content on, on YouTube anymore. That's for sure. Mm. My favorite one was... Nah, deleted channel was too predictable to be fair. It was just too predictable, at least for me, because like, yeah, he had a second channel and well, yeah, he's not gonna delete his main channel. Uh, I don't know, I'm just, it's just for me. Mm. Well, to be fair, there, there are reasons to believe that, considering that he was fed up with all of the controversies and dramas he was going through. So, I guess there were reasons to do that at some point. Eh, I don't know. You can't just stop. Yeah, it's too fucking relatable. <laughs> I do understand him. You, you cannot just stop. You... yeah, it's the same with Twitch. I just, I just cannot stop. Okay, I just cannot. Uh, yep. <laughs> it's like streaming or doing YouTube. If you have a particular like mind, it's just very it's very addictive for some reason. I don't know why. All right, so what's going to be the next thing? We upgraded aids, we did a little bit of a refactoring. Maybe we can try to implement something useful for our game. So we have a couple of issues here, right? We have a couple of issues. Uh, so sp a spike wave goes through the tiles. Yeah, so the game we're developing, by the way, uh, is this game, right? Uh, it's written in C++, right? And uh, we have a, an attack which, you know, makes a spike wave. And the thing is, the spike wave goes through the tiles, like through them, which doesn't make much sense. What I want to do instead is that so they like go on the surface of the tiles like that. See? So that would be way cooler, I think. And uh, yeah, maybe th the next issue is going to be implementing that. What do you guys think? Is that a good idea for, for, for the stream? Um, okay, but we're gonna do that after the uh, after a small break. Uh, small break, two minutes, literally two minutes. Sounds fun. Yeah. So essentially, what we'll have to do, we'll have to, <clears throat> when spawning the next uh, ice spike, right? We'll have to. Uh, make a query to the tile grid entity, right? Tile grid, and just to see if the place where we're trying to spawn a, a spike, we have to, we have an actual tile there, and then we have to snap. It's actually, oh my god, it's actually collision resolution. That's what it is. It's it's literal collision resolution because in collision resolution, when you run. Uh, when you have an entity, right? If entity goes below on one of the tiles, we just snap that entity to the surface, right? Mm -hmm. And the same should just happen to the spike as well. Yeah. So it's pretty much what it is, right? You just, yeah. Hmm. Which is interesting because on the next one is going to be there. So some of them are going to be actually snapped down probably. So, but yeah, we can try to just apply the collision resolution algorithm on the positions of the spikes when we spawn them. And if it's not going to look good, we can try to come up with something else. I think it's a pretty cool idea. Uh, yeah. Mm. 
Uh, feature already implemented. Yeah, it's already implemented in my head. Okay, let's make a small break and you guys uh, have fun. I'm back. Too back. All right, so let's implement that shit. Uh, did we merge already? Did we, we didn't merge. Okay. Uh, merge the pull request. Uh, and let's take a look at what we have here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. two, 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 two. Uh, cool, cool, cool. Merge origin master. So we're gonna create an issue uh, branch for this specific issue. Go through the tiles. The issue is number 341. Okay, cool. 26 more hours until the next AOT release. Advent of Zod. Attack on Titan. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, so what's gonna be the next thing? Uh, spike. Advent of Tzod. Um, G episode. <laughs> yes. Um, mm -hmm. So this is how we actually spawn the spikes, right? So we have this interesting entity, right? Uh, you can activate a single. You can activate the, the wave, right? You can activate the wave, uh, and this is where we spawn the spike. Right, this is where we spawn it, uh, which is quite interesting. It's quite important. So this is the position of the spike, and this is where we'll have to resolve it. And what I'm thinking is that should we actually resolve the collision um, somewhere um, inside of the game? So let's actually go inside of the game and let's take a look at this function spawn spike. So we're spawning it. Aha. Uh -huh. All right, so that looks like a pretty good place to do that. And so if I remember correctly, in the tile grid, resolve point, yes, this is how we do that. This is actually a very simple function. So essentially, you take the grid, you take the grid, and you take the spike position, you literally take the spike position and you just pass it as a pointer, and this thing will actually modify uh, this entire stuff for you. You don't even have to worry about that. So uh, let's actually build only debug. That could be actually the whole implementation. <laughs> if it goes well, that could be the whole implementation of that feature. Uh, are you guys ready? Are you guys ready? I'm about to do that. And it didn't work at all. I'm so happy. Yes, it, it didn't even snap anything properly. Huh. Excuse me? So, spawning the spike. Resolving the collision. That's very strange. Why doesn't it resolve anything? Did I... 
Hmm. Not a divine intellect at all, unfortunately. Hmm. Is that because I activated somehow incorrectly? Okay, so what if I activate it and I do spikes I position? Maybe I'm not recompiling anything. Let me remove that and see if it fails with the compilation error. Okay, so it does fail with the compilation errors. Uh, is it spike or spike wave? Spike wave is a collection of spikes. We do, do want to do that for a single spike. Yes, we do want to do that for a single spike. Okay, it's not even... Huh. It's, they just go through. They, they don't care. Huh. Okay, so let's actually do a little bit of experiments, right? So I'm gonna just put this thing here. And it literally doesn't give a shit. Uh, so we can give it like so. Uh huh. Now we're talking. Okay, so it just didn't have enough like place to snap to somewhere. Huh. That's really strange. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. Uh huh. Oh, I know what's going on. When we are rendering the spikes, uh, render, maybe updating them? Yeah. So we're updating the spikes. We actually have to resolve the collision all the time. Of course, if the spike is uh, dead, is not dead. But we can actually resolve their positions all the time. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, works by Pepegli. Yeah, it has to be continuously resolved, actually. Uh, it has to be continuously resolved. So... Mm-hmm. It's really strange, like if it continues to resolve it, it should make sense. But it doesn't. Um, okay. Uh, so maybe we'll have to come up with something else then. Um, Alright. Mm -hmm. It kind of works, but when it goes really deep in there, it just doesn't work properly. Oh, and for example, in this particular situation, it doesn't go down. So that's another problem. That's another problem. Does it, it should go down. So in in this particular, yeah. So oh, the whole resolution, collision resolution, is not particularly great idea. Mm. All right. So let's try to come up with something else then. So if it's not as easy as I, as simple as I thought. Hmm, so what we can do in that particular case, so within the spike wave itself, within the spike wave itself, when we are about to spawn it, so we have a position, which we constantly uh, modify according to the direction. Um, so if we have the grid, we can use that grid to go down, to go down and f <laughs> to go down and find uh, the closest thing there, right? 
Mm. Yeah, essentially that's what we can have uh, here. Right, so we need some sort of a function. Uh, clo um, floor. Tile grid floor. So it will accept the tile grid, and probably this has to be a method of tile grid. Um, so it could be like actually, yeah, let's actually go to the tile grid. Um, floor of C, yes. <clears throat> so, excuse me. <clears throat> Um, so, and what we actually try to find, uh, maybe we're trying to find vector to f, that's right. But it's only if you're... Uh, I think I understand what needs to be done here. Essentially, you have a point, you have an absolute point. So here's a fine floor, right? Here's a fine floor. Uh, and you provide the point, an absolute one, uh, some sort of like ABS position, whatever. And if that absolute point pointing at air, you just go down and find the floor. If it points at solid, if it points and solid, you have to do the opposite thing. You have to go up until you find air. Make sense? And that way you can sort of follow the the surface, right? Because if the next one is going to be there, like right, I think I think that makes sense. Yeah, I think this is the easiest way to implement that. Okay. Uh, let's go and in the tile grid grid CPP. So let's go ahead and do that. Mm -hmm. So we have two options and uh, we have even something here. Uh, is a tile empty absolute? Yeah, yeah. So if is tile empty absolute position, we do one thing and then we do another thing. Uh, empty go down go up there we go go down or go up uh, go down or go up and uh, i think i need to make a cup of tea chat i need to make a cup of tea uh, so then we need to convert absolute to tile coordinate tile coordinates right so here's absolute uh, tile position so here's the tile position and um, we're just going up until we see something um, yeah. let's make a cup of tea does anyone have any questions or anything to say to me the chat seems to be dead since I switched to game development maybe people don't care about game development and rather care about C++ programming so i don't know maybe game development is not that interesting of a thing so did you guys like me developing aids more than developing the, the game so what is more interesting um, don't forget to stop searching for the floor yeah sure Personally, I prefer it, but it's something that's cool. Okay, I see. That means it's yes. AIDS is more interesting. Um, yeah, I guess the, the thing is that like the audience, like I build around myself an audience who's interested mostly in like technical stuff, like technical programming and algorithms, and something that deviates from that is actually like meh. Uh, yeah, yeah, I see. So the, the answer is yes. So, so AIDS is more interesting than that. Okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you so much for the answers. I really appreciate that. Um, hmm. Okay. To to. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, find floor. 
My theory is that game dev is more subjective, so that there's more chance that people... <laughs> <laughs> implying that software development is not subjective dude dude oh software development is the most subjective topic you can even come up with holy shit just look at all of the bike shading uh, conversation about tabs versus spaces indentation editors operating systems holy shit it's, there's nothing objective about it whatsoever uh we have a raiders from donho hello welcome welcome raiders how are you guys doing hello 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 <clears throat> hello 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 so we're doing a little bit of a game game development you know so just, just trying to implement this thing uh all right so yeah so we have a tile coordinates and stuff like that and uh, we need to go down, of course. We need to go down. So, so we have a function somewhere, probably. Um, <clears throat> is tile empty tile right? Um, while style empty uh, tile position, we're gonna be just going down, right? We're gonna be just going down. And again, we, we actually kind of want to limit the amount of times so we want to go down, right? So that's exactly how we're going to do that. Uh, I less than like five, right? There we go. Makes sense. So tile position and uh, so essentially what we're doing to go down, I have to actually increment Y. Yes, I am Pepega like that. Yes, uh, my Y points down there. Uh, and after that, we just need to return what we need to convert actually tile position to uh, to the absolute position tile. So we can do absolute to tile one, but tile to absolute one is kind of difficult. Uh, tile two. Yeah. We don't have a way to do that, apparently. Well, okay. This, why is, this one is actually very interesting. If we're going down and we have a tile... <clears throat> so what we need to do here is... Not a mathematician. I already lost the context, I'm sorry. Um, so, so I'm gonna do tile uh, position and I need to multiply, multiply it by tile size. I need to multiply it by tile size. Might as well actually multiply the whole thing by tile size. Right, and that gives me the, um, you know, the absolute, the absolute thing. Um, after that, I need to set Y not y, x of the result to the x of absolute position here. That's what I need to do. So essentially what I need to construct here is vec2 um, absolute position x abs uh, and y is going to be tile position y. Tile position y multiplied by tile size. That's what we're going to do here. That's what we're going to do. And that's going to give us the prize. Yesu, yesu, kawaii desu. Okay, this this thing compiles, so I'm happy with that. So the opposite one is going to be similar, actually, but we're going to go in a different direction. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, while, um, yeah, while this thing is not empty, we're actually decrementing that thing, and the result is going to be pretty much the same. So. Uh, we're going up until we find <coughs> <coughs> excuse me going up until we find aha uh -huh. okay so that means in terms of y we actually have to go minus one right okay so that should be it that should be it <coughs> Hello, Holt Z Z two two three sixty nine for twenty. Hello, hello. Uh, okay, so let's actually in spike uh, in a spike way. What we're gonna do? So here we have here we have position, right? And we actually have to modify position before we can use it. Um, so I think the way we're gonna do that uh, is gonna be position uh, game grid find floor 
position. Then we're going to spawn everything there and then we're going to move forward. So then we're going to find floor. So that way it's going to actually follow everything, hopefully. We'll see. Um... Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? That was interesting. Hmm. So I think there's a problem here. So the threshold of uh, searching for that thing should be uh, a little bit bigger. Uh, okay. Size T. Uh, threshold is going to be 5. Threshold. Where is another 5? Threshold. Okay. Mm. Ice Pathfinder. Yeah, it's kind of it's kind of Pathfinder. I think path pathfinderish thingy. Uh, okay, so it's really strange to be fair. Like, why is it? Why is it like that? Even when it's oh, that's really strange. But yeah. Oh. So essentially, is style empty tile? Why the offset? <laughs> Imagine being asked why your program is broken while trying to figure out why your program is broken. Nice. Right, I'm gonna quickly go to the kitchen and uh, boil some water because I want to make a cup of tea. It's gonna be like less than a minute, like 20 seconds, literally. Uh, just a second. You see? I'm back! Fuck, your program is not done. Consider fixing it. Okay, I'll consider fixing it. Sure. Uh, Alright. Uh, so, threshold... Okay, so I didn't increase my threshold. Let's actually try to... I don't know it's, if it's gonna actually fix it. I didn't think it's gonna fix it. Um, so, I don't think it has anything to do with the threshold, though. So let's go somewhere then. Yeah, so and it's it's kind of funny how it just alternates. Like why is it why is it doing like that? Excuse me? The fuck? Uh so let's put it like this. So uh if it's style empty absolute Right, so essentially it probably goes it goes up because it hits this branch, right? So then we convert it to uh, to the tile coordinates, right? To the tile coordinates, and um, after that we're going while it is not empty. We're going up, right? We're going up. Uh, okay, I see. That's what we need to do here. That's why it was needed all along. Okay, so that should actually fix it. That's pretty cool. And now uh, we can add some additional stuff in here, uh, right? Uh, I think if it's yeah, if we do it like that, it wouldn't... Uh, it even goes around, you see? Like, it literally goes around. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it goes through, but yeah, generally... Oh shit, I'm stuck. 
Uh, yeah, this is actually super cool. Huh. So maybe we should not spawn after a particular um, like amount of steps, right? Because it uh, going high up is just too much in my opinion. I think maybe if if you have to do too many iterations, right? If you have if you hit the threshold, you basically don't spawn the spike right so the spike wave will die so essentially it will die on the um on the cliffs or in the walls so essentially spike if it hits wall or a cliff it's not gonna do anything it's, it will die out i think that's a pretty interesting idea right so because going like around the wall it's, it's not particularly like good i think so it just doesn't look nice right like that especially like it, it makes such a weird jump like it's really strange you cannot hide uh from from the wall like that right so it's a really strange jump uh yeah but overall like we i think we did it uh, uh, the wall is a unique entity wall is not an entity wall is a collection of tiles it's not an it's not an entity uh So, uh, that's cool. Let's actually do a committee committee and then try to refine this entire thing. Uh, all right. Mm, make the spike wave, uh, wave follow the surface of the floor. Okay, and I'm going to push that right into the ribbon. Try to make a closed off box with not so full walls, fire your ground spikes in it. Essentially, it's gonna reach the threshold and it's gonna spawn the spike inside of the wall and just continue moving on. So that's what's gonna happen. I don't need to check that. I know what's gonna happen. Um, so. <clears throat> uh, so let me see, let me see. Is my tea ready? I think my tea, my tea is ready, so I'm gonna go to the kitchen real quick and just uh, pour myself some hot water uh, and I'm gonna be back, so it's gonna be super quick, like 20 minutes or 20 seconds, not minutes, not minutes, it's just 20 seconds, maybe even less, I don't know. Hello, welcome back to back. <laughs> Alrighty, so how we can make the spike wave die out after a particular threshold? So because counting the amount of these iterations is very spike wave logic, I don't think this should be a method of the tile grid. So I think we should factor it out into like a method of the spike wave itself. So uh, because it will make a little bit more sense in that particular case. Right, it will make a little bit more sense. So spike wave uh, find floor and for that you will need a tile grid. So tile grid uh, pointer grid. Good suggestion for software to do some simple sketches with the Wacom. I use my paint. So, uh, my paint. This one. Uh -huh. So, yeah. It's pretty useful. I use this uh, for explanations on my streams when I just need to draw something, some diagrams and stuff, right? Things like that. It's pretty convenient. Uh, but it's uh, like I mean, it's it works really well on Linux. I never tried it on Windows. Uh, another option you may have is Krita. Um, so Krita is like an open source Photoshop. Not stream though, meeting. 
my paint uh, should be good for meeting. So uh, what you probably will need uh, specifically with my paint, so we need to wait until Krita loads up. It's, it's actually very slow, especially on my machine. So we need to be able to set the background because by default background is uh, actually white. So if you want to have like a dark zim, you go to the layer and background chooser. Right, you can d have different textures behind. You could have a black background or you can choose like a this kind of background and you can save it as a default. So for this kind of like smooth brushes, you need to find the delayed, uh, delayed brush. So we need to find this one. So, yes. So by default, it doesn't look like this. So it's like a little bit customized to look like this and behave like this. Mm. Lazy brush, yeah, it essentially falls behind to like in interpolate some of the some of your strokes and movements. Um, okay. Um, all right, so here's find floor, and we accept the grid, and uh, let's actually put it here somewhere. Krita, you can Google it up actually. Krita is not that difficult to find. It's a very famous open source software. Uh, open source version of Photoshop essentially. Uh... More, yeah, Krita is more advanced. Like it's closer to Photoshop than, than being simple. Uh... Uh, okay, find floor. Ah, it has to be F here. Yeah, GIMP is like, a, it's not really good in terms of UX in my opinion. But uh, I heard that if you get used to GIMP, it's actually quite good. But getting used to Git is just, <laughs> excuse me, like a time uh, and energy investment that has to be justified in my opinion right and i already made a lot of questionable mistakes in terms of investing my time into crappy open source software uh for example i'm using emacs so it's a very questionable investment in my opinion anyway so here we have to do find floor and a grid uh -huh, hpp so let's actually remove this find floor mm. Uh, to, to, at least for free software. Creed is better. Creed is just better. Trust me. Uh, so it's going to be Creed. I think it has to be a pointer. I liked GIMP. What happened though? You discovered Creed? Um, okay, guys. So everything seems to be working. And now, uh, when you're trying to find a floor. Mm hmm. We can actually refactor this entire thing a little bit. Uh, we can refactor this a little bit. Uh, essentially, we can call it snap to floor. We can call it snap to floor and we can also re return boolean. We can also return boolean. Uh, and we're going to accept ABS pose by a pointer or by a reference semantically. So and essentially what it will do, it will modify your absolute pointer and snap it to the floor, right? It will snap it to the floor. And if it returns false, that means it couldn't find the floor. And that would be the indication for the spike wave to die out, right? You see what I mean? It's like an indication to die out. All right. So um, let me actually move this threshold to the constants because we're going to try to play with different thresholds. Um, so let's go to the assets. It's going to be Vars config. So here are different uh, spike waves. Spike wave threshold. So it's going to be like a simple integer and we're going to have like, let's say 10. So it's going to be a pretty big threshold. Uh, do you code JavaScript too, like Svelte? Um, I code in all sorts of languages. Why do you ask? <sighs> okay, 
So let's replace threshold with a uh, spike wave. Mm -hmm. So spike wave threshold. There we go. Cool. So interestingly enough, uh, you're talking to the crystal lang master. What are you guys talking about? I think you're just memeing at this point already. All right, so here it is. Um, so if uh, this thing becomes greater or equal, we're going to instantly return false. All right, that's what we're doing here. We just instantly return false. And uh, here we're also instantly returning false. And I need to get rid of this condition. So, and at the end of this thing, I'm going to return, uh, we're going to be returning true. Are you using C20? No, I'm not using C20. Um, snap to floor. This one is going to be boolean, and this one is going to be pointer. And this is what we're going to be modifying here. Absolute okay, pointer. Uh -huh. uh, then absolute position is going to be like that. Cool. Uh, yep. So this is going to be our approach. And if we won't be able to find the floor of snap to the floor we will stop the whole wave we're gonna stop the whole wave uh all right so this is how we do that find floor we're gonna put a pointer here uh we're gonna be putting a pointer here and if this thing if you can't find the floor right if you can't find the floor we're gonna be doing that uh otherwise we're gonna set the count to zero, basically canceling out the whole wave. Uh, canceling out the whole wave. See what I mean? Svelte. Isn't it like React JS without virtual DOM? Holy shit! What, what's so special about it? Seriously. Yes, I I looked about I like I looked into it. It's just like uh, web people finally realized that virtual DOM doesn't do shit for you, and they decided to just get rid of it. Holy fuck! Okay, so um, empty floor, and this has to be like this. Uh huh. Uh -huh. So we're gonna put it like that. Spike wave threshold. Okay. Um, snap to floor. Uh, it still says that it's not. Uh, okay. So spike wave. Wait. I actually edited it there. What are you? Spike wave. Oh, I forgot S. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, integer. Okay. What's going to be next? What's going to be next? The web people will finally realize that interpreted languages are slow. <laughs> Or that uh, dynamic typing it actually kills your productivity when you develop big uh, big uh, applications. Holy shit! <laughs> We're living in the era of discoveries, of beautiful, beautiful discoveries. Oh, yeah, yeah, WebAssembly, they already realized that. They already realized it. Cool. Uh, <laughs> nice. Um, okay, so what do we have here? It's going to be uh, like this, sure. The C++ is just C with extras, like C plus equals plus. <laughs> okay, very funny. 
Uh, all right, so I think we're ready to test shit out. I think we're ready to test that shit out. Uh, cool. So what do we get? Okay, so this is the, with the threshold of 10, right? So if I change the threshold to, for example, uh, let's say 5. I think, how many of them do we have here? Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so uh, 5 should act... This wall should actually kill the wave with the threshold 5. So let's find out. Yeah, it does kill it. Look at that. It cannot go through that wall. And also it cannot go through that cliff, right? Uh, unless you increase the threshold, right? In that case, it will do that. So I think five, like around five, should be actually a reasonable threshold. Yeah, that's actually super cool. Can your JavaScript do that, by the way? I don't think so. All right. So, um, that is pretty spog. Nice. Uh, so, let me take a look at some of these things here. So, it definitely will be able to go through that. It, oh, yeah, so it still can tunnel through very, like, thin wall. Thin, not thin. <laughs> thin wall. Uh, all right. Yeah, in some particular circumstances, I think it's... Yeah, it can tunnel. But maybe that's okay, actually. Uh... Cool. Yeah, I think tunneling from time to time from, like, thin walls should be okay. Uh, can make the, the gameplay a little bit more interesting, maybe. Um... Yeah. Cool. So that means we did it, I suppose. Uh, okay. And it would be nice to kind of like um, collapse some of this code. You see, we have repeating things in some of these places. Right. Uh, for example, we can at least move this thing out. Right. So we don't have to do that in each of the branches. Right, we don't have to do that in each of the branches. Mm. All right. All right. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, so there is a lot of duplication here. Well, not a lot of duplication, but it's just, you know... Yeah, I think this kind of duplication is alright. So um, I'm gonna commit this entire stuff. Uh -huh. Delete. Uh, delete trailing white spaces. All right. Um, so we're gonna commit here. What exactly did we do here? Uh, make the spike wave die out when it hits wall or cliff. I think this is how we spell cliff. And we're gonna push that right into the repo. Unlucky. Have you been watching Forcing too much lately? <laughs> uh, Alright. Yeah, seems good. <laughs> yeah, to be fair, his Minecraft streams are fucking hilarious. Holy shit. Uh, yeah. We never stop, yeah. I, like, I find him more entertaining than his old PUBG streams. Uh, unfortunately, in 2021, it's impossible to actually have this kind of PUBG streams anymore. Yeah. 
no stop except yeah of course thank you uh all right mm, make this spike way follow the surface of the floor and uh, close three three one three four one and um, okay so that's pretty cool uh let's wait a little bit and i'm really happy what we came up with i think it's it's actually pretty pretty interesting um i really like how it follows right huh. it's really nice so it makes it so okay so let's actually take, take a look at how it looks with an enemy right if you have an enemy that uses the spike waves uh this enemy is pepega so let me try to I think it's I think it's stuck. Yeah, okay. Yeah, some Yeah, it's it's stuck a little bit. Corner Yeah, it's not the corner case, it's a bug. It's a well-known bug. Uh Okay. Well, yeah, okay. So we're going to fix that later. <laughs> um all right. So we're just waiting for the for the rest of the stuff. <clears throat> well known current cases. Current case, yes. She thinks that go down is a good idea. Yeah. Alright, so I'm already streaming for four hours and I think um, it is time for me to go already. We did a good job today. We refactored AIDS a little bit. And we implemented a pretty cool effect uh, for our uh, attack. I think, I think it's pretty, it's pretty good. So it's pretty good for today for four hours. I'm really proud. Yeah, we also had a major AIDS release. So that's that's amazing. But unfortunately, boys and girls, it is time for me to go. Thanks everyone who's watching right now. I really appreciate it. Have a good one, and I see you tomorrow. Tomorrow, according to the schedule, we're gonna continue doing this thing uh right we're gonna continue working on this game and uh also check out our schedule to uh for more information on different projects we're working on also check out our uh, what's channel where we archive all of our streams this stream is going to be there but tomorrow we upload them on the next day and also check out our discord server for a flying discussion with the community so yeah and while you're waiting for a continuation of an epic game development how about we raid somebody so what do you guys think? Should we raid anyone? Is anyone developing games or something? Games and shit? So I'm gonna actually close the music because uh, I think it might be slowing down my computer a little bit, but I'm not sure 100%. Uh, PHP raid. Pilot is streaming. Is, is Pilot streaming uh, programming? If he's streaming... Okay, so he's doing games and shit. Okay. Uh, so let's let me take a look at the science and technology. Uh, science and technology. Oh my god, it's so. Oh my god, Twitch is so slow. Oh my god. Okay, so what do we have? Um, Game Dev Pro, C plus plus, but Unreal Engine. Eh. Engines. Imagine using engines in twenty twenty one. Do 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 I'm sorry, I didn't see anything. All right, so I guess that, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. <laughs> Love you. Mwah.